I'm coming for all of you. Right now, there's a 15-year-old sophomore in high school who has no idea they're studying nursing just so they can wipe my ass in 17 years. I'm 50 and single. That's a fantastic combination. I'm going to spend my golden years dating a handful of spit and a jug of Astroglide. Hey, what's happening, Mike Smith, 40-year-old boy podcast? Now, I look, I'm going to preface this right now with I don't know how any of this is going to sound or work. And I, I got to be honest, I don't know if you guys are sitting at home all the time going, fuck, Mike, quit talking about the sound quality of this goddamn show. Yes, there's a sock on the microphone, and oh my Christ, you're in your apartment, and there's a fridge and a fucking fan overhead, and people outside in helicopters, and retarded Steven is walking by, and you're talking to that fucking guy. Uh, and he's not retarded, he's just on the cusp. The guy's on the spectrum, okay? Give him a break. Steven, come on in here. <laughs> See? That just dude's on the cusp. Dude. That's a, that's a what, what? You don't think? That, oh, I'm sorry. Is that... You, you got a problem with me qualifying Steven as on the retarded cusp? Dude, I'm offended at that. Um, I actually grew up on retarded cusp lane. I don't know if you know that when I was a kid. <laughs> I thought it was a cul-de-sac. It was. Well, yeah, there certainly was, was no way out. I'll tell you that. <laughs> was, it dead, was it a dead end? Well, that was the hard part is they put all the retards in retarded cusp lane. <laughs> and then they drove. They couldn't get out because they just go. They kept walking in circles. They're like, where's the exit? We got no idea. <laughs> See, that's cruel, man. Don't put retards in a cul-de-sac because then they wind up in a fucking square dance for the rest of their lives. And it happens. Like an eight-year-old retard, you put him in a cul-de-sac, you come back in 20 years, he's 28 with a long-ass beard walking in circles going, there's no way out of here, duh. Get I out. like balloons, duh. <laughs> Seriously, it's terrible. Get out of my house. What? <laughs> um, all right, so here's the thing. Like I was qualifying in, be- in the beginning here before Dave started talking about people with, with disabilities. <laughs> Before Dave painted me into a corner and made me say things I shouldn't say, uh, I always talk about the sound and I always talk about like uh, all of the things in the surrounding atmosphere. Well, we're back in the basement. I'll tell you that. And uh, it's me and my great friend Dave. Hi, Dave. Hello. That's David Mex Hernandez. He's going to pretend like he's not excited to do this, even though every week he's like, you coming to town? You coming to town? You coming to town? You going to do a show? Going to do a show? Literally, we're in his basement today as a Sunday. And he's like, uh, hey, you know. I was just thinking, you know, you always talk about how it's like this tortured artist thing and you can't fucking get your own show and it's really hard for you to get your own thing going. What if we banked like a, a year of shows this weekend? Could we do that? I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can bank a fucking hour, let alone a goddamn year of shows. What if we did something? How about that? All right, we'll start that's, at that. That's a little bit more realistic. That's the base of our pyramid. And I yes. should tell you, yeah, so he... Because uh, you've been in town since, what? There was shit to do. There, we sat around and watched football. There was shit to do. <laughs> The fight was over at by midnight last night. There was shit to do. I said you. I even said last night after the fight, you want to go down and record. I did not. Mm. I but I clearly did not. I, why? Because I, I fucking. You know why? Because I didn't go to bed on Friday. I didn't fucking sleep. I slept four hours on the plane. To, what does it have to do with? Because then I come down here and I wind up with retards in a cul-de-sac. See what happens <laughs> if I got no sleep? I need a fucking nap so I don't say something stupid and have you throw me out of your goddamn house. Yeah, that would be bad. Uh, well, I, I it wouldn't be the first fucking time. Really? How's uh, that, how's things going? You almost threw me out once. Uh, I almost threw you out of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was bad one time. Well, because I was all fucked up in the head. And I, you, well, you saw me punch myself in the face really hard once, and you were almost like, "You, you, dude, you need to leave." Um, no, no, no. You meant I, leave the basement, but no. The time you almost threw me out of your house was because you were going to fight me, like you were in your fucking den, and uh, and I swore, I and your my... kids were around, and and you were like, "Hey, man, you need," and you stood up, and I went out and took a walk. I took a lap. Oh, uh, yeah, that, but n- n- yeah, that's kind of glossing over a lot of details of course <laughs> well, there's a reason i'm not gonna well, go into all of it I, we can't because then we everybody would know that i was perfectly in my uh right uh, yeah no that's wrong you were out of line anyway yeah, as long as we keep it general i'm as out of long line. as we know you were out of line yes. if we go to the I, actual details then here's we'll, what happened yeah, right. i i was walking around and i had a suit on i looked really good and you i was did. just eating a piece of cake and dave's like what are you fucking doing get out get out and i went but dave that seems weird we've known each other 35 years he said out <laughs> And I said, you know why? Because I said heck in front of his son. And he's like, you, you can't be swearing in my house. Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm like, you just swore in front of him. And he's like, get thought, out. No, you took the Lord's name in vain. That's what happened. <laughs> Which I said, that's true. That's that is it. a big deal. Yeah, the two you, you true pixies go out of true that order out the window. And that's another thing. Where do you come off calling me Nick? <laughs> I'd like a flaming rum punch. Um, <laughs> so I, I just. Serious I thought, question. Serious question. All right. Things go and hit the skids for you. Things are in trouble. Kristen's in trouble. You know, whatever. Whoa, you whoa, whoa. hold on. Serious right. question. Follow me. Your your family. 
uh, so there's some sort of issue and you find yourself in a, you're bankrupt. You bought Senator, too many guitars. We're both part of the same hypocrisy. Uh, Don't ever think it has okay. anything to do with my family. Anyway. All right. Ask me the question. Uh, so you, you've got a terrible thing going on and you you wind up on a bridge. A bridge? Yes. Oh. And it, it looks like things are going to go off a little for you and you're thinking about throwing yourself into the surf. And as we know, Mexicans can't swim. So you're thinking to yourself, oh, uh, well, which is completely, <laughs> exactly. You guys, that's all you do is swim. Um, so you're going to go leaping into the water and kill yourself. Yeah. And an old dude shows up. Yeah. And he's like, Dave. I uh, hate the fact he's calling me Dave. Well, he does that immediately. He's like, Dave, uh, because Jesus hasn't told him yet that you like to be called David. Well, my name's David and right. or Max. But yeah, but he has Dave on All his right, list. So we're already off to a bad start, Angel. Uh, well, right. He's there to save your life, and he's an right. angel, and he's going to show you like all your past, and he's yeah. going to hook you up. Do you, do you even do you even make one step on that journey? No. Right. You just tell him he's a fucking psychopath. I said. I said. Well, what are you talking to me for? Leave me alone. I'm trying. Like, to I'm, dr- I'm trying to dry off. Yeah, but I'm going to save you. And here's a book. And then here's a, a, we get a, a like a hot toddy in you. And uh, your mouth's no longer bleeding, and Zuzu's pedals are gone, and let's go now and, and take a trip and look at you playing on stage with Giga Water and learn how good things were in your life. Uh, I don't think I would have been as um, hard to convince as Jimmy Stewart was. I think the first, you know that an angel was there to help you. I think once he showed me a couple of things that proved that I wasn't alive anymore, I would I would say okay, I get it. So you wouldn't think that the angel somehow had, had cordoned everybody off and said, no, "All right, we're going to trick I mean, David." I, I think that Jimmy Stewart was pretty dumb in that movie. He just didn't see. He, obviously, Clarence was. Well, that shit happens all the time in movies. Like, I, yeah. I see stuff all the time. Like, uh, you know, they have these, like, whenever there's, a, it's like, a hero movie, and then the hero says that bad things are coming, and if someone goes, well, wh- what do you mean? I'm like, dude, that's Batman. Like, why are you asking Batman any fucking questions? <laughs> Batman just showed up, and he's like, hey, this is bad news. There's a bunch of magic dudes coming, and they're going to fuck up the city. Well, I don't know about that, Batman. Fuck you, I'm Batman. I got a cave under my house that I built with no friends. Think about that. Literally, I gotta be honest with you. I watched I got a these, cave. Yeah, with no friends. He's got. Well, he built a cave with no friends. Is that fucking just Christian Bale down there with a spoon tunneling out the goddamn? No, the cave, cave was there. Fine. So then he built those computers and shit. He he fixed up his cave. Uh, dude, see that's what I'm saying. It makes no sense. It all falls apart if you give it one second of thought. What Batman? You know what I talked last week about the Terminator thing, and I said it all completely falls apart if you really think about it. Or two weeks ago, whenever the fuck I mentioned that. So does Batman. So do the Avengers. All those fucking things completely fall apart. So why do you watch all those movies? Exactly. That's what I'm asking myself. I watched Guardians of the Galaxy just recently, and it was a badass movie. I think I talked about it on last yeah, week's show. Did. And uh, but at the same time, if you sit there and you ask three questions, the whole thing fucking completely. You're like, no, that would never happen. None of this would ever happen. Um, but you don't like when people do that, when they tell you that I stuff. know, but I find myself doing it sometimes. Because when I told you the stuff about Reservoir Dogs, you didn't want to hear it. Well, that's different. That's a real life movie. You oh. know, but I mean, Cape Dudes, you can just fucking, you can solve for X immediately. And just go, like, when, again, Superman shows up, he descends from the sky, and everybody's, and he's like saving people from fires, and everybody's like, I don't know if I trust that <laughs> Superman. What are you talking about? His name is Superman. Look at his hair, he's got a fucking curly cue on his forehead. You can't trust that dude? But I'll tell you this, what if Superman shows up and he's black? How? Oh, my God, there's not a bullet left unfired in this world. If fucking Superman flies over and he's a black dude, people are just gunning the shit out of him. Holy shit, look at that raven in that sparkly suit. Let's kill it. I mean, they just don't fucking, yeah. literally, those guys just try to murder the shit out of him. Whenever you, I see, like, like, they're, like, there's a black hero, like the Falcon or somebody, I'm just like, you know rednecks would be trying to shoot him That's because you're racist. You only see people by color. No, I don't, that's not the case. I see everybody's biases. That's oh. what I see. It's not me. Hey, I wouldn't shoot the Falcon. I'd be like, dude, <laughs> don't come down and land on my arm. This will be fucking hysterical. Hey, cool. Let's do a trick. Where's the snowman? You know, all that kind of dumb shit. Well, you, Black Superman was Muhammad Ali, so you don't even, you, of course you're There down. was a man <laughs> named Cassius Clay who changed his name <laughs> to, to Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Doesn't rhyme. Mm. <laughs> what a stupid song. I like it just made no I sense. I had the 45. Of course I did. So did I. Muhammad, the black Superman. <laughs> and it was called Black Superman Muhammad Ali. I think so. Yeah, it was. Because on the flip side was Black Green Lantern. <laughs> Joe <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't even say it. God damn it. I'm so mad. <laughs> black Green Lantern Joe Frazier. <laughs> Even even in his superhero dom, Joe Frazier's the B-side to Ali. What a fucking drag. Black Ant-Man, Ron Lyle. <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. Uh, black, <laughs> black, black, black Mantis, Jimmy Young. <laughs> dude. Black Hulk, Ernie Shavers. <laughs> oh, stupid. 
<laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Joe Frazier's the fucking B-side, even in music. God um, damn it. That guy just a, that's just a fire hydrant with a left hook. Who's mad at that guy? <sighs> oh, Christ. All right, so... Uh, so I guess, here's the thing, I've already progressed into the show, we're deep in now, we're, yes. we're hip deep in this goddamn show, and I tell you folks, <laughs> we're trying a new uh, interface, we have a new, uh, this is the, what is it, the fa- focus right? I actually went out and I said, look, I'm, gonna, I'm going to start using my computer. When I used to record this show here record. in the basement with Dave, uh, he has this antiquated system where he would record us on a series of uh, beeswax discs. <laughs> they, you would have to put them on the wall, and they would go like a reel-to-reel tape, and then you would Audio. stop. Ow. Everything was imprinted, and then you had to actually brand it with a branding iron, and then you'd have, we'd send it to a, a, a studio in Taiwan. It's the machine they used in Old Brother Where Art Thou to record the Soggy Bottom Boys. It was like a spinning thing and a needle. I'm a man of constant sorrow. <laughs> I could probably pull that off. I, I, I just had recently had a, a person ask me if I could sing. Uh, it wasn't me. No, no, of course. Well, you know. I mean, you've seen me in action. <laughs> As you've pointed at me and said, no, you got to, dude, try to do this. And then I'm just flop sweating all over your goddamn basement. Um, every time, because every time we go to do the interlude, I'm like, look, any, if we could just avoid having my voice on this at all, that'd be great. That's um, no fun. I know, but I'm always that guy. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I, here's, the th- like, and I said to this person, uh, my friend who was asking me if I could sing, She's like, well, what do you think? Could you do this? And, that, and I was like, no, I can't. She goes, well, have you ever had lessons to know for sure? I'm like, oh, I know for sure. I, know, I do not. Yeah, I don't need lessons. I don't need to waste a teacher's time. I don't need to, you know, literally, because I would get into his house and I would hit one note and then there just like sparks would fly out of the wall and all his fuses would burn and he would just be like, out, out. <laughs> get and, out. Yeah. And then I'm in fucking, you know, retarded, <laughs> retarded lane cul-de-sac or whatever the fuck. <laughs> walking in circles, waiting for fucking time to expire. Get on a beard. Get out of my house. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, so I cannot sing. Um, but I was explaining to her and I said this and I really meant it. I said, I would probably give five years off of the end of my life to be able to sing like really well, like singers, like badass, crazy Beyonce fucking badass. I don't know if I would give my life, but I, I, it'd be cool. But here's the thing. You can already, you can do it. So you don't have to Um, worry about that kind of stuff. Okay. But you also, I also know my limitations and I know where I am, am good and where I'm not so good. And there's things you learn as you as you as you grow you're like oh my range is here i shouldn't be here but then you hear somebody that uh, they open their mouth and you're just like oh god what does it feel like yeah because it's even worse when you you kind of know what it feels like you know like if you're good at sports and you're, you're really good at a serve like serving tennis and you're like man i'm good at this i know how it feels when i hit the ball right right imagine if what it must feel like to somebody that like uh the, the Williams sisters when they hit one, you no, know, like, I can't, I can't. I but you have you. a taste of it because you can do it a little bit. So you got to be like, wow, what is it like to be on that next level? I have no idea. Yeah, I am, and that's got to be hard for anybody in that sort of field, like a- athletics especially, because that's competitive. But singing, you know, you can if you can sing, you can monkey through it, and they can fuck with you and pro tools the shit out of you. Oh but if, yeah, but if you're somebody, <laughs> yeah. but if you're somebody who can just fucking wail. I, one of my favorite clips, and it's funny, when I was in uh, Canada, I was sitting with, uh, and, I, 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 and I turned into a baby like immediately, it was so funny. Me and uh, Suzanne and Ken were sitting out at his fire pit in the backyard, uh, but it was daytime, there was no fire to say, oh, actually, we weren't by the fire pit, we were, far, we were fire pit adjacent. And we were talking, and he had his phone. <laughs> were you nearly called us that? It was very important. We were in retarded fire pit. <laughs> Jesus. Fire pit? We, we, we were in drooling infant fire pit. All right, so... Uh, we're sitting there and he's got his phone and he's playing on a, a Bluetooth speaker yeah. music is playing and then he's playing some hit songs or whatever and uh, and I don't know I don't I don't even know how we got onto it I go oh dude but I, I you got to see this and there's one there's a clip online and it's Beyonce uh-huh. there's two of them that are brilliant all right there's one where she's just warming up backstage and uh, and and my favorite part about Beyonce she's never not surrounded by what looks to be all of the extras from 227. Like, I mean, it's just <laughs> her and and then all of her backup singers and then their aunts. You know what I mean? And then her, A lot of aunties. And, and I would do that. I yeah. mean, fuck yeah. If, I, if my friend was friends with Beyonce, I would never yeah. leave. Oh. I, and look, I would never say anything. I wouldn't eat one cherry tomato off the fucking spread. Oh, I would I make would. sure. No, bullshit. I would make sure I was, I was kept around. I would be as, as nondescript as I possibly could be just to bask in the glow of Beyonce and hang around all the time just in case these moments were to erupt. Like, I wouldn't want to give her the chance to ever have something like this happen with me not around. I'd, just be, I'd hide in a shoe. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> give a fuck because there's this scene where she's warming up. I think it's an American Idol. And she's in the back rehearsing a song. 
And it's my favorite part is she's sitting in front of a mirror and she's just singing. She's just warming up. Again, she to her, this is just, she's just doing it. And someone's kind of surreptitiously filming her. And then this person pans the room and it's just elation. Like every, everybody's face, just these smiles. It's almost like, uh, remember an airplane where everybody got high? And they all kind of tilted yeah. their head. And, and they snorted the glue or whatever. They all looked and, and they tore, lovingly. They, yeah, and then, then that one head that just like flies through. <laughs> Steven Stucker, I think it was. I mean, th- that's exactly it. Because they pan around and everybody's auntie and everybody's everybody's cousin and everybody's third cousin and everybody's brother. They're all just sitting there and they realize they're in a green room as Beyonce just warms up and yeah. just fucking crushes it out of the out the, out the the blocks. So uh, that, that clip was on, but I wanted them to see a different clip. There's a clip where Beyonce goes to a hospital. And she sings Halo. And uh, it's just her and a guitar. Yeah. And, uh, and, but, and oh, I'm sorry, her and a guitar and like eight backup singers and then their aunties <laughs> and, and aunties. Then their friends. Yeah, but, but she's sitting in a, in a fucking yes. barca lounge. Yes, recorded by, on a phone. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's... And, there's, you know, and, there, and there's just cancer kids just, you know, you can see them healing in the moment. They're you know, snapping and happy and they're doing cartwheels <laughs> and they all forget they got spina bifida. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's a kid shaped like a question mark. He stands up straight for the first time in nine years because Beyonce <laughs> shows up and blasts out a fucking awesome song. I mean, it's genius. She's like the Pied Piper of, of curing illness. She just walks in. Her voice is medicine. Yeah. Because you just see, there's a kid with lupus and you see it leave his <laughs> body <laughs> the lupus just, has left dude you know what lupus looks like it looks it's just uh like from bad news bears no it looks oh. like the not me shape from the family circus <laughs> that little ghost yeah. remember the not yeah. me ghost no, no, that, me. that's what lupus looks like it's like this kid is like he's celebrating and then you see lupus emerge from his body and just be like he salutes he's like righty yo and he fucking just walks off like felix the cat just fucking looks for another victim <laughs> dude watch out man the lupus ghost will get you he's gonna jump right down your goddamn throat oh, Jesus. uh but if you do find the lupus ghost what do you do you throw on yeah. lemonade and you hear, sorry, not sorry, sorry, not sorry. And then the lupus ghost leaps out because Beyonce is the cure for lupus. She's the human cure for lupus. So she sang for the... She sings Halo, yeah. dude. And it's just, you know, and uh, it's that thing where all of a sudden it just starts and everybody's like... Yeah. And then it's fucking, they start clapping and then the backup singers and then she's, I, I mean, it, it's happiness. It's joy. It's joy in five minutes. I, you, you can't, yeah. if you could send it to people or bottle it, it is this most amazing moment. So I wanted Ken and Suzanne to experience it. Yeah. So we put it on, and I showed them the video, and I'm passing yeah. it around. And, uh, and Suzanne goes, well, she made sure that there was cameras there to film it, and there were reporters to make sure that she was there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. She goes, well, nobody goes to a hospital without a camera. Why would you ever do a nice thing with nobody? And I'm like, fuck you! I'm like, like I went from zero to, to hateful in, yeah. like, seconds. <laughs> because I'm like, how can you shit on Joy? You're look at lupus. The, look, exactly, she's the lupus ghost. Look at the fucking face on the kids. Yeah. Look how happy and excited they are. I don't give a fuck if she brought a press helicopter that was hovering above all of them. She's doing a great thing, and those people are happy for it. It's like when they... Uh... They showed uh, jo- uh, Johnny Depp go to those hospitals to take the time to dress yes. in the full costume uh-huh. and stay in character. And a lot of those aren't filmed. Somebody f- somebody filmed it with their phone. Yeah. It's not like he brought a crew with him. Yeah. Like, the kids' faces were ridiculous. It's worth every second of it. Yeah. And but, that's what I'm talking about. So then, so Suzanne says that where she's just like, oh, yeah, I'm, she, I'm glad she yeah. brought reporters to a fight. And I'm like, God damn it. And so I looked at Ken like for like a lifeline. Yeah. I'm like, fuck that. I go, Ken, come on. And he just goes... Well, I mean, I kind of agree with Suzanne. You know, you don't have to film that and put it on the internet. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. I leaped into the fire pit. I was, I was just like, how can you... You can see that she's doing a great thing. Well, I don't give a fuck. It's filmed and shown after the fact. Well, These people are happy. Happiness was it, is great. It, was it, fil- it wasn't filmed. It was filmed by her? It was filmed by somebody who had a phone. Well, I mean, any, yeah, fo- somebody taking a, a, a phone thing. You can't blame Beyonce for that. And I maybe, mean, if she brought a, an HD cameraman with her, then but, that's but, different. But you're Beyonce. There's an HD cameraman wherever you go. Oh, okay. If she was on retarded cul-de-sac, they'd be following <laughs> her around. As she's walking in circles, they're filming her. They'd be fucking perfect with it. <laughs> she's stepping on like retard's beards and stepping in Dude, puddles of drool. you got to stop saying retard. I that, probably do, yeah. yeah. What the hell? Why did I get hooked into that? Because you're free no, to do know. what you want. Well, yeah, the basement, it's, it's so, there's Any no windows time. nobody can see. Well, you don't have to worry about me going, dude, you went too far. Uh, yeah, that's true. But that's, that's a, a dangerous thing. But maybe thing. that's not a good thing. I, yeah. I just said it's not a good thing um, at all because I don't care. I need to get roped in and tethered it's not, to something. not my show. But like you just said that thing about Johnny Depp when he shows up at the pirate uh, outfit. Yeah. He's, he's Jack Sparrow. And uh, I've seen that posted. And mm-hmm. you want to cry because uh, the, just the joy and the happiness. But then in the comments, people There's are just like, somebody, uh, uh, yeah, well, I wonder what he, when he was beating up Amber Heard if he was wearing this costume. Was he? I, that's my point. I'm like, yes, I hope so. I mean, I, I just, I get so tired of people like dropping yeah. snark like that and thinking they've dropped the microphone. Yeah. Like, I think I, I, I might've talked about it on last week's show, Geraldo Rivera, when they're doing the statues and they're tearing the shit down and he wrote, oh, well, what about Christopher Columbus and all of his uh, Native American genocide? Should we tear his statue down? 
And I, I literally, I answered him on Twitter and I said, okay, great <laughs> idea, Jerry Mustache. Like, I mean, it was just like, fuck you, man. Yes. You, you know, they always think you're going to paint you in a corner with some logic. Oh, yeah. what about George Washington statue? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Burn it down. Who cares? I, the only statue I care about is mine. Yeah. I gotta, the only reason mine would ever be torn down is because of something that you said on this show. Oh, your real statue. My okay. real statue. Uh, I thought yeah. you meant one Hi. you owned. I'm a guy that, yeah, a lot of people don't know. I'm a statue. This is totally true. I, I think we've talked about it on the show before, and I should, we should put up a photo on the Joker's page if you haven't yet. I could. Yeah. Fuck you, I could. Don't, don't give your false humility no, and set I, it fucking walking. No, because I have done it before, and I don't, I don't you know, I always feel like if, if you tell somebody something, it's kind of everybody knows, but I forget. Not, well, because it sounds not ridiculous. Everybody, not everybody knows. But it sounds ridiculous. It does. I, I and I've had people think I was joking. Yes. Well, it's because again, it sounds it's fucking ridiculous. Dumb. Yes. So Dave, uh, ha- his face is literally on a statue at Soldier Field in Chicago. It's it's this face. They used his face. The sculptress. Sculptor. Uh, was it a guy? It was a husband and wife team of their old school. Their old school, like Renaissance style painting um, sculptures. They do all that stuff in the old tradition, and they they're, they're a husband and wife team. Jeff and Anna Varilla. I think is their name. Wait a minute, the Varillas? Yeah, they make spaghetti. Now, I, well, I saw a video of him dressed up as Picasso, and he went to a hospital, and somebody said it was fucking terrible yes, that he was it doing was awful. that. They were so mad at him. Uh, all right, so I apologize. Continue. What was I saying? You're oh. talking about your statue and spaghetti. Oh, yeah. I was? Spaghetti, <laughs> spaghetti showed up. <laughs> Wasn't he in character in he Pirates? Walked, he, walked, he was riding the lupus ghost. I think he's a guy with one eye. Spaghetti yeah. threw his saddle on the oh, lupus maybe ghost <laughs> and just, just <laughs> rode through town. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god, it's spaghetti in the lupus ghost! <laughs> what is that? That was a like, Hardy Boys. I was book. just gonna say it was my favorite Hardy Boys! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Literally, I was gonna say it was my favorite Hardy Boys book. You suck! Oh man! I hate you. If I'm alone, that doesn't happen. Go out! Leave, get out of your house! I'm sorry. Get out of your house. Uh, dude, I swear. That was my biggest, my biggest fear of ever being. Uh, on this show is doing what I just did. Then I, you know I what? didn't mean to. No, that's okay. I'll go with my second choice. That's my favorite early 70s Elton John album. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Rockin' the, Westies. The dirt cowboy yeah. in his underpants. Yeah, or fantastic in the brown dirt cowboy. <laughs> Spaghetti and the Lupus Ghost. <laughs> those are classics. How do you not have those in your collection, you, ja- you jagoffs? <laughs> so I'm a statue. You know what's funny? If Bernie Taupin writes a song called Spaghetti and the Lupus Ghost, he brings it to Elton John. Elton John doesn't even ask a question. Doesn't even bat an eye. He totally yeah, sings I can it. Sing this. All he does is he calls his designer to try to get a spaghetti outfit. <laughs> uh, all right. So your your face. Yes, there's a, a, a statue on the uh, the north end zone of Soldier Field, right across the street from the entrance to the Field Museum. Is um. A thing called Tribute to Freedom. It's called a relief because it's not a freestanding statue. It's like a scene of all the military people and their families. And the Hispanic uh, Marine is to the far left of it when you're looking at it. And he's standing there all... He's basically in a stew look stance. He's just not doing the stew look. Right. He's got the arms crossed. and So they needed a face. So um, they picked mine. And but how did they find yours? Someone referred you to them um, somehow, right? Through There's... through through cousins and marriage, uh, an in law. Did they, they did they find your profile in OK Stupid? Did that happen? Possibly they. No. What's OK Stupid? <laughs> oh, no, I just invented it. <laughs> that might have been a band I was right. in. Hey, who's that bass player? He looks like a marine. Let's throw him on a statue. OK Stupid. Um, so they, they found you via, uh, they, they, they took to Pilsen, which is the, the Hispanic neighborhood in Chicago. Um, and a cousin of mine lives down there and they asked him, you know, look for your friends. We're looking for a, uh, early twenties Hispanic, you know, looks like a Marine. So he, sub- he submitted a bunch of pictures of people that fit that demog- that age group from the neighborhood. And they weren't. They couldn't. They didn't see anything they liked. And my um, my cousin's wife says, "Well, why, why don't you show him a picture of your cousin David, meaning me?" And my, my cousin's like, "Well, no. He's like at the time I was what thirty five, thirty six years old. He goes, he's he's too old for the." And she goes, "I don't think that he looks that age. Why don't you give it a shot?" So he did, and they called me. Yeah, they called me at work, and they said, "Come in." And they, I did that thing. I think we might have talked about this before. We did talk about it. I don't know if we got before. into the full yeah. details, but uh, Yeah, he did that thing, you know, that, that thing where they put their thumb together and they make a the artist makes a, uh, a, yeah. a pretend frame, T V frame and kinda And you're frame. naked, right, when this happens? Not at first. Okay. They make you strip down yeah. in order to But I did face. get a little worried when I when I saw that they needed a full body and they and they start with a nude 
I'm like, and he goes, no, you're just, we're just using your head. I'm like, good. Cause I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go for a couple sittings and this is in like uh, late 2002, early 2003. And then by 2003 uh, Memorial uh, veterans day, they unveiled it at soldier field. So it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be there forever. Probably. Well, no, not until the alt left tears it down for, cause I'm a warmonger. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Um, I'll be there for that. I'll or the to... people that don't like when you make fun of the mentally challenged will tear it down as well. Well, see, th- but this will be a cat's game. Because like the <laughs> Who alt. Who tears it down first? Well, the alt right, because you're Mexican, you know what I mean? You're Hispanic. Yeah. And then the alt left, because you're a warmonger. Yeah. A baby uh, killer. I was a baby killer, too. You actually have Mexican warmonger on your license plate, which is weird. Because, you know, <laughs> Illinois usually has a seven character limit, but somehow. Yeah. I got more. Yeah. He's got a license scroll. Um,. So, uh, so yeah, so when anybody shits on that kind of thing, it drives me crazy. You know, like I said, the, the Johnny Depp thing, oh, yeah, when they put right. up the, the, the pictures, um, and it happened again last night. Because uh, I'm, I flew home here to see David because of uh, uh, numerous things. Well, th- that gets back to what we started talking about earlier. The reason you came out here. Now, I was under the impression that you came out here because you wanted to record a ton of stuff. We wanted to record episodes for the podcast. We wanted to record stuff for Patreon. We wanted to record things to do on Anchor. He wanted a well, I would never, weekend well, of... First, first of all, I would never record multiple podcasts. That's never happening. I, I, we've talked about that before. I just, I and can't... And I, th- I think that's a, a ridiculous limitation you put on yourself. My, they have to be in the moment. They have to be right they up to the They would be in the moment. No, because if we played some weird evergreen thing that I referenced like from, you know, well, a month the, later. Well, that's the thing. Would you rather have a show that you recorded two or three weeks prior on a week when you're having a hard time and you can't get anything you want done instead of worrying about it? You know, you got a back catalog of stuff. Hey, no one's heard this. No, that's a bad thing for me because honestly. I'd rather hit you make well, fun of retarded people than <laughs> tell people how messed up your head is. Stop saying retarded. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Retard. No, sometimes I tell people, well, that's what the fucking show is. Sometimes they have to hear how messed up my head is. Sometimes it happens. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, you know, does I, I'm hoping it doesn't get too preachy or whiny. I hope it doesn't fucking happen. It's a thing that I'm trying to fix. But at the same time, the show, I'm never not able to do a show. I have yeah. to focus and do a fucking show. That's the thing. The discipline of it, the focus of it. You know, when Lily was involved at the show, I had a place to go. Or I had her coming to my place and I'd be like, all right, so I've got to do a show tomorrow at one period. I'm just, I, I've got a window. I've got opportunity. I got to do it. But if you leave me to my own devices, unfortunately, and it's something I'm trying to fix and it's something I talk about every fucking Monday with Shannon, I will easily put things off and go, well, yes, you know I what? Know. I, because shows do can, they, they do come easy to me where I can sit down and I can talk. I go, well, I'll just bang out an hour because unfortunately, like most other people be like, I can't talk for a fucking hour. Do me but, a favor. How long, how far are we in the show right now? Uh, we're at about 28 minutes. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Well, because we, well, we're, we're having fun and goofing around. I mean, I, but I do this myself too. Sometimes I'll just be talking and all of a sudden I, I, I don't know. And I get on a roll and I'm an yeah. hour in, um, I can do that. I'm not, I'm not bitching about it. I'm you, now you got me all fucking self-conscious. I'm not, I didn't come here to do a backlog of episodes to give myself a month off. I mean, that's not the fucking case. The show's drop, the show. Drop bombs. Uh, uh I, <laughs> word to your moms. Uh, I got more rhymes than the Bible's got Psalms. So <laughs> I, I came, you know, I came, yeah, I want yes, to do some Patreon I, stuff. I actually kept kidding. Whatever. It's just funny that, you know, the focus point was that you wanted to come home and, and do work for the show. And I'm like, well, that's no, it's great. Th- I disagree with you. The focus point was I want to come and watch the fight with you. That well, that's was, what that ended up happening. Was but no, that's what I wanted. I, I said to you, I'm no. coming home to watch the fight. I'll come. No, I'll, I'll come back in a month to record more stuff. But I, I thought it was a matter of convenience. Well, like, hey, why, why don't I come home to see the fight? And while I'm home, we can record a bunch of stuff for the show. That's I, okay. That's right. Maybe that's cl- that's close. Yeah, so, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Let's come home and record a bunch of stuff for the show. By the way, the fights that weekend. No, I mean, I wanted to watch the fight with you. That oh, was okay. what I was. What I was. And also because the air fryer I found was retar- ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It like, was reti- <laughs> ridiculous. I had to stop that. Um, it was, uh, yeah, like, uh, it was only 150. It was redarted. Yeah, yeah. It was 150, uh, round trip, which is ridiculous. So I had to take it. And then uh, I figured while I was here, we could get some stuff done, which is fine. Sure. Um, now you, you, you mocked me for being, uh, totally, uh, enthusiastic about being on the show. But I think the what, what really is, is I'm like, okay, the fight was on from eight o'clock to midnight. Yeah. We we were up till three in the morning last night. Yeah, watching Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you bear- gotta sometimes you gotta watch Fight Club. 
I told you yeah, last night. I, I felt I, I thought we should have capitalized on 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 how jacked up we were at how great of a fight that was, and you start recording, and you would I I, I envisioned like you coming down here, and just it would have been like this thing of recap and awesome. Well, we can and, do that now. I mean, we're going to well, do no, that now. Mood is wrong. <laughs> All right, well, let's recap Fight Club, which I also watched. Uh, For the 80,000th time. But, but I, I know. But again, but it's been a I while know. since I watched it. Because I mean, sometimes I'll watch a bit of it, if it's on or whatever, yeah. I catch it. But to watch it from beginning to end and to yeah. see it and to, and to get re-immersed in that, in that story. Because, again, because uh, look, I, I'll just be this guy. Um, I always talk about how the movie Network from 1976 basically predicted the future. It's totally relevant. It, and if you watch it today, it looks like it could have been filmed last week. I mean, it is it is so on point. It basically calls the the invention of reality TV. It calls the invention of manipulating people through media, and and uh, it's it's insane how much it gets right. And uh, when you watch Fight Club, if you haven't seen it in a while, um, I would I would venture to say you should probably watch that now and think to yourself, well, a lot of this is coming true or is in the midst of coming true. And uh, it also I've I took a lot of philosophy from that book and that movie, and then started to look at the world through that prism. And I, I believe it to be true. I believe there is a generation of men who are scared of women or who were not, did not have male role models. And so they have nowhere to go. That's what these, and these, so these Nazi idiots, they, they drift off and they look for anything to identify with. But unfortunately they identify with things that give them false power. Uh, and that's why when you see in there, they all, they all identify with a Tyler Durden. So they're willing to do whatever he says. And it just shows you how easily people can fall under the umbrella of someone who's a bad influence. Wow, I thought I thought Stop Bike Club was a cool movie because there was fights in it. It's all of those things as well, but that's why I'm saying there is this this. I mean, look, I'll be truthful with you. If I somehow went to an underground fight club and there was Brad Pitt there with that fucking line from his hips down to his, you know, all the way and that fucking eight pack, I'd do whatever he told me. I mean, I, I'm in. Let's do it. You want to paint a smiley face on a building and set a couple of fires? I'm doing it. You want me to hose down a priest and his Bible as well? Let's go. So by that rationale, if Hitler had a better torso, you probably would be a Nazi. What do we know? Real, what do we really know about Hitler's torso? It's kind of pudgy. You don't know that. You think he wore a lot of that armor, body armor? He's layered up. Yeah, the guys. He's, he, they don't get to take a fucking shot at him. Now, Gehring, that's a tub of goo right there. Yeah, that guy's a fat guy. Yeah, and Goebbels yeah. too. No, but Goebbels he, was skinny. Was he? He had a club foot. Who am I thinking of? Gehring. Who's, who's the other fat Nazi? Who am I thinking of? <laughs> that guy. <laughs> well, Gehring's the fattest Nazi. Mengele is thin. Goebbels was thin. Yeah. Himmler was thin. Himmler. That was. I, why do I have? Oh, I'm thinking of Hamler. <laughs> <laughs> Hamler, he like he enjoyed ham. He was, that's a, a Himmler who liked ham. That's the kid that was in the Sandlot. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. Shut up, Hamler. <laughs> ah, uh, see Hitler. Yeah, see that you missed your calling. If Hitler had been better shape, but but I'm, again, we don't truly know as much as we should oh, know about do. Hitler's torso. He's got like five bulletproof vests on. Why is he wearing them around his waist? He's probably got an artist smock on there because he's in there painting stuff up. Because aesthetically, the Nazis were geniuses and their marketing and their fucking sharp ass jackets and their crazy swastikas and the red and the black yeah. and the white and the brown. And holy Jesus, that's you can't fight a country that's good at fashion because they'll fucking, they'll swamp you. It's right. You got to fight Mongolia. Those guys are wearing like straw hats and no pants. It's like, yeah, <laughs> bomb the shit out of those guys. That's fine. Fight the Zulus. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have shirts. See, but I go the other way. The Zulus, but they got that yeah. the awesome. The they feathers got those spears, those shields. Right. Those shields were kind of cool. Yeah, that's genius, man. Everybody, you know what's funny? Every country gets it right when it comes to that kind of bullshit for war. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> nobody wants to help their homeless, but they want to have the sharpest looking fucking uniforms. Like we've got Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and then. Uh, who, what a great place. To start. <laughs> Uh, so you got those dudes and they all have different uniforms. Like, yeah, but I, I mean, I know our buddy, our buddy's kid is in the Navy. Uh, I always felt the Navy outfit was kind of weird. It, you know, the hat and the little, the white, Yeah, but, th but Cracker Jack ruined the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. Cracker yeah. Jack ruined the Navy. So did anchors away. You right. Know, see? Sinatra dancing in that. Yeah. The, yeah. Like, some guy doing like a hop dance and a crazy sailor suit and the bell bottom things at the bottom. Yeah. That's just foolish. I mean, I, I Again, my, my parents or my father, my family, the, the, the men in my family all served, and they were all primarily Army. But the Marines dress, those blues are, that's tight. Well, okay, but the Marines have like a, they have that badass hat. You know and what I mean? And they got the jacket with the white belt. And, and the yeah. Army has like the badass helmet. And yeah, then the Air yeah. Force has the flying helmet. And then the Navy has those hat you could fill with pistachios. <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks like a little cup and yeah. it goes on top of it's their like head. like a Jackie O hat almost. Right, it's awful. It's like you see a Navy guy, you want to scratch him behind the ears and throw a ball and have him go get it. See, and I, no offense I, to you, Navy guys. That's what I was just going to say. I, I, I'm just talking about the uniform. Well, me too. Yeah. But but it also, it does, it makes them look a little foolish. 
The bell, um, uh, like weird bell bottoms, yes. right? Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, you're right. It's cracker like jack. Like a weird neck kerchief. It's the, it's a cracker yeah. jack, dude. Exactly. Um, and look, my dad was in the Navy, so shut up. All right. Yeah. Um, although I think that happened because he was drunk and he wandered into the wrong building. They said, hey, you, like want, four, three you want four shots of whiskey? Sign this piece of paper. Next thing he knows, he's a CB. <laughs> guy's, <laughs> guy's building a bridge in Cuba. He's like, hey, where's my booze? Dude. <laughs> I got five kids to ignore. Get me the fuck out of here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I, I, but, yeah, aesthetically, our uniforms, I think the Navy is clearly in fourth place. I've never seen Coast Guard's formals. You know, my brother, my brother joined the Navy. And I, this is, I think I've talked about this on the show. Andy was in the Navy. And, uh, and then his Navy pictures, he looked just like my dad's Navy pictures. Oh, yeah. But they, you just, because he had looked like a doof. You know, you got the hat on and the weird white thing. Whatever, yeah. that's fine. But then my brother Andy brings home, this is totally true. He went to Great Lakes Naval Base for his training. And he comes back. Uh, and I was talking to Jimmy O about this because his son just went to Great Lakes. And Andy's Navy recruiting, I don't know, class, whatever the fuck. He, they got a book. They give you a book of your basic training, so everybody's all happy. And uh, probably two thirds of his his group was African American. Mm-hmm. And in the photos, I mean, in the Navy photos where they're like group shots and stuff like that, these dudes are holding up like the hand signals and the you know kind of like the West Side, but also yeah. some stuff that I don't look. I, I don't know if it's I don't want to be that guy, but it could have been Crips and Blood shit. I got I got no fucking idea. How do you know it's not like shadow puppets? It could have been that. It could yeah. have been Go Navy. I got no fucking clue. Yeah. Or, yeah, honestly, he could have just been, we could have been a bunch of thalidomide babies and their hands are all <laughs> fucked up. You know what I mean? They're in the Navy. They got flippers. It's like a natural lobster, fit. Yeah, like the yeah. lobster flipper lady you <laughs> talked about a couple years ago. Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's a solid look. Um, so, yeah, man, guys, how do you remember that? I don't know. It's so funny. People will say shit. Yeah. Uh, like this, because I said, uh, I talked about, I forget, something a couple of weeks ago that some guy said it made him laugh. And then some guy said, Scorsese sarcoma is the funniest thing Mike's ever said. And it made, he goes, it fucking it made him laugh. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I remember, I can't even remember the context of Scorsese sarcoma, but I, I don't remember know. it. I remember it was an id and we drew it. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. But it came, it came out of some, I don't know. I, I don't know half the shit I say. I made myself laugh. Really? Again, and this is so stupid. It's terrible. Uh, I made myself laugh because I, I throw all those ids. We made a bunch of them. Like we had a soundboard on, our, on the video. I, I, it might even still be up. It's on your website. On the website, which I got to change. Hi, Ryan. I'll call you. Uh but I put all of those sound drops into my iTunes. So then, like, music will be playing. I'll be in the shower, and it's just like a regular song. And then all of a sudden, you hear me. You hear my stupid voice. Yeah. And I'm like, if I can control the spiders, I can control the storm drains. <laughs> and then control the world. And I just start laughing. And I'm like, what? that is weird to throw. Yeah, throw your entire library on yeah. uh, shuffle and just see what comes up. Just these weird ass. Yeah, well, and that's what I talk about with YouTube. You can do that. You can play Schmitty Roulette. If you go to YouTube and just pick a year and pick an episode. Yeah. And you listen to it and just hear the story and hear some dumb thing that comes out. You know, it's, it's uh, hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> you on the couch. What is this? Oh, wait, it's a commercial. Yeah. That was my anchor app. This yeah, I know. That's what, when I heard it, I was like, I remember that. Yep. You forget those and you go, oh, man. I, <laughs> and that's why you came to record. You wanted to make more of those. Well, things. of course I did. And I tried to do it last night, but you were busy watching Fight Club. Yeah. And I was busy watching the Bears and I was busy looking at my phone and typing a lot of stuff. So, I, yeah, we never really. Oh, don't. For, dude, you've, you've posted more than I have when I've been in town. Don't even no, do that. that yeah. No, no, you have. You think. You're giving blow by blow of the fight. We're all, I'm with friends. I'm having pizza. I look at Davey's like typing like. Well, fight is starting. I was, res- I was responding. See, I like to respond to people when they write to me. I don't know what you're talking about. So that's usually when I'm I'm heavy on on the phone, but you literally are on the phone all the time. This is a lie. You're watching. TV. I texted one person today. You were watching home run uh, highlights. I showed it to you. No, I, you didn't show. You showed me one home run, and you spent another twenty minutes watching. Twenty seems high. Something else while the TV's on. I watched Reese Hoskins hit a bomb. The Phillies guy's going bananas, and, and it wasn't like, on a regular television, so I went and looked it up. I know, but you're doing that all the time. Nah, God, you, you are so wrong. What a liar you are. No, I'm not. I'm having a, a lovely conversation with your wife about. About a wedding, I look over at you. You're just typing furiously. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I don't want to bother Dave now. I wanted to get down here and record, but you're so busy. Yeah, um, that happens. It happens all the time. Uh, so yeah, so we watched Fight Club last night, but I'm glad we did because I hadn't seen it in a while, and I wanted to go ahead and you. you sometimes you got to infuse yourself with that sort of thing. Sometimes you have to get inspirado. You have to go ahead and see something that you love, and it reminds you that you love it. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I do that a lot, I wind up in a dark apartment and just go, Nah, man, I don't remember cool things. But then <laughs> you'll hear, you'll see a cool thing, and you're like, Oh fuck, I love that cool thing. Or you'll hear music. Like I was I, honestly, I was I got off the plane today when I landed in Chicago or yesterday, and uh, and I, I, the, you know, iPods on shuffle, and it kicks into uh, uh, Ooh La La. By the faces, and I, you know, I haven't heard that song in fucking forever. And all of a sudden, it just kicks in. It's like ding, 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 ding. and you're just like, God damn, this is great. ooh la la, it's fucking awesome. And then I'm I'm fucking strutting through the airport to it. 
No. Yeah. That doesn't sound like you at no, all. No, it's me. Okay. That's the thing. Is all of a sudden you get you get re-energized. You hear cool things and you go, yeah, I love a cool thing. <laughs> cool things are cool. And then you hear Sonic Youth playing cool thing and you go, I love Sonic Youth playing cool thing. Cool thing. I'm on a kitty. I bought a Sonic Youth. I bought a Sonic Youth for that because they were like, they got endorsed by Chuck D. This is when I was heavy into Public Enemy, and he was on. A, he did. He was on a song with Sonic Youth. And I had always heard about Sonic Youth. I'd be like, dude, Sonic Youth, you got to fucking listen to Sonic Youth. And then I threw it in, and uh, you can keep your fucking Sonic Youth. <laughs> it's just, it's not my speed at all. You know, Kim Gordon and everybody else. Or, 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 yeah, Kim Gordon's Sonic Youth. Kim Deal is the Breeders. That's Cannonball by the Breeders. Yawn. Oh, I'm sorry. They're alive. I forgot. <laughs> Anybody, any living musician, you couldn't be less interested in. So I don't that's know fine. what you're talking about. So here's the thing. We have a new interface that we're trying. And hopefully, by the way, at the end of the show, I won't listen back to it. <laughs> like didn't record anything we can do. Uh, so, you, yeah, I, this is an actual real interface. So I can use a, 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 a DAW a home recording software. It's, it's, you know, I got to be able to plug mics and instruments and stuff. So this is, I bought this for my studio, but I bought it specifically so it'll take two microphone inputs, which means that in theory we could do the podcast and that's what we're doing. We're hooking it up to the laptop for the first time. This is a two input, huh? So like, <laughs> yeah, it's a D, yeah, D, DP. I got uh, a DP, fo- I got a, a DP, I got a DP interface. Nice. You ever had a DP in your interface? Uh, no, I, I'm not, unfortunately. I wish I could have my interface in a DP. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I would love to do something like that. Just yeah. fucking get into a spit roast and but stare you, up close. You keep burying the gain. You don't want to bury a gain. On I've your saw, you know, actually, bullshit. I've been in a room with a DP. I've been in, I, I saw that when we were in the, uh, when, when Karen and I went to that swing club. I said, I told that story. We were in the one room and it was just a pile of bodies and they were going at it and there was, and there was a, you know, there was penetration. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that creeps me out. It was, it was actually one of the hottest things ever because, like, we walked in there, and uh, I, all right, I'll tell you this, and you're going to be horrified and probably run screaming from the room, but why not? Go ahead. Uh, you know, this is a story from I told about Big Dick Dwayne, and uh, Karen and I wound up at a swing club. Uh, but we went into one room, and it was just, it was like once your eyes adjusted, Whoa! you just saw, yeah, it was, it was like 15 people on a bed, and I think one of them was a lady. So they're just like, you know, they're going at it. And it's, it's just, again, it's just flesh. You just see a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And so this girl's getting tag teamed and you can see it. And then she's working two guys and, uh, you know, she's going fucking soul circus seal. And, uh, soul circus seal? A full circus oh, seal. Oh, I thought it was a soul circus seal. I don't know what that is. I talk quickly. <laughs> uh, soul circus was a band, wasn't it? What? That was like one of the side projects from somebody from fucking like the, the, the breeder, not the breeders, the fucking uh, wallflowers. Soul Circus is a band. I know they are. All right. Well, they have a they have a sex move, which is cool. <laughs> that I stumbled into. <laughs> uh, I, I've told the story on the show. I swear to God, because I was behind Karen. I, and again, I apologize. Cover yours because you don't want to hear this. But uh, I was I'm behind. fine with the the cul de sac thing. But this, I don't <laughs> want to hear. It's just a pile of Get flesh, out. and everybody's going at it. And there's Get people out. on the side, and there's like you know, dude, there's blowjobs adjacent, and then there's like in the corner of your eyes, people going at it, and you just walk into a big sex room. That, it's pretty yeah, fucking hot. So fine. Karen's in front of me, and I'm walk I'm watching it, and this is the hottest thing is Karen doesn't even look at me. She doesn't say anything to me. We don't participate. We're just kind of drinking it all in, and uh, out of nowhere, she just reaches back and grabs my cock, just grabs it, just like. Like almost, he was just like, "Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get a hold of this because it's like this is happening." And it was, just, it was just this really hot moment. She didn't look at me and be like, well, "There was no preparation for it." She just reached b- back and just fucking mm. just grabbed me and just and like pulled me like closer to her. I was like, "Oh, dude, this is well, awesome." The, obviously, she's just a, she's just really good at uh, physics and knows that that's the best way to get you to come forward. Could have been that, or she was like looking for like a, a rope to pull herself out of the room. You know, like <laughs> it's dark in there, so she needed to find. She was grabbing for purchase <laughs> to get the fuck out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but then we wound up in the, you know, we went into the glory hole room and then we go over to the other room and, oh, what a fun time we had at the swing club, uh, until the guy with the giant fucking hammer came in and intimidated the shit out of me. Um, so, uh, now uh, have you finished? So you, we talked about the interface. Did you finish saying what you wanted to say about the, the girl or was he said a girl was asking you if you could sing or did you, was there a th- Oh no that, no! Cause... It was just, it was just that I can't sing. Period. It was just it, and I was saying that I would oh. I would literally give five years off of my life to be able to sing. I thought she was gonna there's she's gonna come back and tell you. Well, guess what? I can grant you these powers. And <laughs> no, she's not an elf. Okay, uh, you didn't mean like a sorcerer or anything. Like no, that. not well. I don't know yet. It's early, but okay. I mean, I, perhaps she's got some sort of wizard. Magic. She could be a wizard. She's certainly magical. Don't kid yourselves. But I don't know about any of that other nonsense. Um, but yeah, but she she we were just having a conversation about how much you love music and how you wish you could participate in it. 
because you love it so much. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, but I can't sing. She's like, well, you'd be surprised. She goes, can you play any? And I go, no, that requires a level of, of commitment and technique that I don't have either of. I mean, I just, to sit and learn how to play guitar. Like I, I, I look, we just talked about the discipline that I don't have. It's hard enough to make me sit down and do this fucking show. Plus, and, in this, this late in life, it's almost impossible. It's like learning a second language. Like I would love to learn Spanish. Yeah. I mean, if I had learned it when I was 10, it'd be a totally different story. Your brain's wide open. But now my brain's full of fucking, you know, retarded cul-de-sacs and Xavier, Xavier Cugat. You know what I mean? So and black green lantern. Yeah. And black Hulk or any shavers. <laughs> Uh, that's got to be the name of the show, Black Hulk or any shavers. I like Black Green Lantern Joe Frazier. <laughs> what about Spaghetti and the Lupus Ghost? I like that too. These are all fantastic names and lovely. Um, so, so I, my point is, I don't know. I hope the sound is working because otherwise, I mean, this, I mean, I can't put this out if it's terrible. We'll hear at the end, I suppose, because he's got the interface. We hooked it up through my laptop, and it looks like Audacity is working, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, but we played it back and it sounds like it is, but I don't know what it'll sound like for you guys. And, uh, again, I talk about this all the fucking time, the sound it, it and it's just because I don't want to be amateur night. Other guys have full on podcasting studios and guests and publicists and, uh, you know, booms. We don't have a well, boom. I need a boom. You're talking into a boom. Eh, it's gotta be held up over my head by a guy or it's not a boom right now. It's a mic. It's a microphone on a tripod. It's a microphone on a boom stand. Right. But if a guy, uh, if a guy had the boom stand over me. I why would, should a guy? If you're 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 sitting still, why do you need? But a that's boom the definition guy? of boom. No. Boom. Yeah, boom is like you got to have a dude holding it. That's why there's a boom guy. Look Otherwise, up, it's just a microphone. Look up what kind of stand this is. It's well, a boom stand. It's a microphone stand. Boom style. But it's holding a mic. It's not holding a boom. A guy holds a boom. A boom doesn't hold a guy or a thing. I think the fact that it has the the tri the arm that comes off the main base makes it a boom. That's just a mic arm. Mic arm? That's okay, a... I'll look that up, musician's friend. I'm sure you're <laughs> <Okay>. right. <laughs> Speaking of, mine's kind of low. Can I raise it? What's well, your studio? Go ahead. Well, I know, but do? it's going to cause your, your... Everybody, I apologize. Right. Remember all well, that sorry, shit is guys. where I apologized about the sound? Let's, this right. is hurting my back. All right. I'm trying to do this as quietly as I can. Now, see, if you had a boom guy to hold the boom over your head, you wouldn't have to be worrying about no, that. No, if I had people, I could have had them see that this was not properly how do we not how do we not have people we I totally have people. Need people i have people but i don't have people for the right things <laughs> i got a lawn guy oh okay you know i got a i got a i got a uh exterminator guy i got uh oh so you got weed like, guy yeah these are real people that's yeah. not good we need you need a you need like a brow mopping guy and a boom guy and uh, you need a you need a, you need a reach around guy. I had a reach around girl for one time at the fucking <laughs> in the swing club. It was great. I had a brow wiping guy. What was a girl? That was probably one of the coolest things that ever happened to me. What happened? Uh, I had the Saturday Night Fever thing happen to me. I was at Northern with a bunch of our friends, and uh, I had been dancing with um, I forget one of our buddies' girlfriends. We were all at Northern, maybe a couple years out of high school. You forget nothing. Who were you dating? Who were you dancing with? Don't. Uh, you're like one it of was my probably, buddy's girlfriends. It was but... probably Jenny because okay. they were go, they were both Jenny and Chris, uh, high school sweethearts. They went to the same college together, so whenever we go down to see them, you know, and so we sat down, and this woman woman she was probably a college girl came over and said, "You you you really look like you worked up a sweat out there." <laughs> like now, obviously Jenny's there, so Jenny's best friends with Kristen. Um, so I'm not going to do anything stupid, but I'm like. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know what flirting is. That was pre-marriage, right? Yeah, I was dating Kristen. Kristen wasn't there. Kristen was at her college. Right. I had gone down to see Chris and Jenny and all our other friends that were down there. And so she she took a napkin and like a dish towel, like a bar, and started, and said, started wiping my forehead. Like, oh. And I was, I got really creeped out because I'm, I'm not used to that kind of thing happening to me. Like, and, and but I'm like, thanks. And everybody's like, did that just happen? I'm like, it did. You saw it happen. I get, I didn't do anything. I don't want to get ratted out as doing something wrong. See, but th but th that's, th that's a cool thing, though. Right, but what you're supposed to do at that point is you just pick her up, you throw her on the table, and just fucking go down on her right in front of everybody. You're just like, that's, that's, that's the move. No, it isn't. And then, because then while you're doing that, she takes the, her dress, which is over your head, and she mops your brow with her dress. It's just like a total package oh, I deal. See. No, I just, I, I actually think it's far more erotic that way, the other way, my way. The way it happened, yeah. You, I'm nobody's getting thrown on a table and dresses getting lifted up, and you're going down on somebody in front of a room full that's of people. That's awful. That's not awful. That's, yeah, I mean, before you in that moment, perhaps it wasn't good, but because well, uh, I wouldn't do. That. Well, and they, I, I look. I'm just saying when it comes well, also, to like if you're if I'm dating somebody yeah, or married like you yes. were, I wouldn't either. I know, but but I, I, I would enter. I certainly would entertain. Sometimes the PG, the PG thirteen 
thing can actually be more erotic than the R-rated thing. That's basically what it comes down to. Yes, of course. I get that. Please try not to tell me. You don't you're, you're, have to explain seduction to me. Yeah, I do, because your, your resolution is always throwing somebody Because in I'm this. doing a fucking show, and I want to make people laugh. <laughs> all right? it funny yeah. how I threw that woman on the table? And <laughs> Dave, it was so great that that woman mopped your brow. Oh, boy, that's it, awesome. It was kind of cool. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it was a cool, cool thing. thing. It's a cool that's moment. All. That's yes. all I'm saying. But it's my job to go, what if we escalated that a bit? Oh, I see. And okay. then you I should have punched her in the face. No. Oh, that's wrong. I'm not. I don't okay. eat chicks. You don't do that kind of fucking right. thing. You go to. Your, but if you go down on in front of everybody and everybody just gets a hearty laugh out of it, then everything's fucking perfect. Then I punch her in the face. No. Oh, dang no. it! I, I don't know how to do. I guess not. Yeah. This yeah. this explains why you were stuck with Kristen. Like yeah, you got with I Kristen know. and you punched her in the face once, and she goes, "I like this. This isn't bad." I'll and never be. A, I'll never be a successful podcaster. It's obvious. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I don't punch anybody I'm in the face. Sick. All right. I, I, please don't boil me down to that. <laughs> I'm not. I tend to be semi-entertaining and interesting about other things. But I mean, yeah, occasionally there are bad things. Like last week when I banged my head into a fucking door and yelled at a guy. That happens. No. no. Um, but I apologize. Right away. You know, this is funny. I, but I look at what I've, the, the lengths I've come. People t- uh, wrote me on Twitter and they're like, congratulations to you for apologizing in the moment. You're making progress. Good for you. Uh, because I knew instantly oh, that I was yeah. wrong. No, yeah, that's a um, good thing. Yeah, th- that takes a lot. Yeah. A lot of dudes don't, a lot of people, well, I shouldn't say dudes, a lot of people don't do that. Yes. And you want to go ahead and try to get ahead of that sort of thing. And I have been ahead of it for a long time. That was my first uh Yeah, like when is the last time somebody's outbreak? ever gotten done you wrong and then turned around and, and, and apo- like said, dude, I'm sorry. Hey, yeah. I screwed that up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean really that, you'd, be, you'd be like, wow, that just yeah. happened? But I do that, I'll do that a lot of times in the car, too, because if, so, if someone will give me like a fucking look or whatever they think, that, and mm-hmm. I'll... I'll but here's the thing. I'll roll my window down, and I'm I'm a giant, and uh, and I want I'm trying to get their attention. And if they'll look at me, I'll wave, and they think. And then if sometimes they'll roll the window, down, I go, "Hey, man, that was my fault. I'm really sorry about that." Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, but then when they no sell that, that drives you fucking yeah. crazy. They just kind of give you a look like, yeah. and I'm like, "No, I'm I'm dude, I'm apologizing right now. I'm actually because then that, that just apology. right that makes you mad. Yeah. Then you're just like, "Whoa, motherfucker!" Oh, look, just, I took the high road. I want credit for it right now. Hey, I was wrong first, but now I'm fucking right, you fuck. And now you're fucking wrong, so stop being fucking wrong because I'm fucking right, you fuck. <laughs> uh, In a school zone. Yeah, well, you know what? Things happen wherever they happen. Um, so my point is, I want this to sound good, but I came here on purpose. You know, I wasn't planning on doing a show, really. I wanted to record Patreon stuff and other things that we possibly could talk about. Yeah. But I also came to watch the fight, which we watched last night, which was, and honestly... Uh, I, I which I loved. I was glad because I got to come here with my friends and have pizza and watch a goddamn fight. And then uh, I don't know if you know this. Uh, Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather last night. You've probably heard about it, uh, which is an MMA guy, a UFC guy fighting against the best boxer of his generation. And uh, and everybody was like, oh, what's going to happen? And they didn't know. And everybody was saying it was going to be terrible things. And I wasn't expecting much out of this fight. I wanted to see the circus and the spectacle. I was hoping for crazy. I was hoping for just kind of like ultra violence. And then uh, and what we got was ridiculous. Quite frankly, it's an entertaining fight. Is what yeah, we got. I, I was uh, I got something I completely didn't expect. Conor McGregor actually fought smart and fought in a way where he was trying to he might win a decision. Like it was the weirdest thing. Uh, he came out banging early and then Floyd let him do that. And again, we get to watch all of it unfold and everything happened the way uh, a lot of people predicted that it would happen. I mean, I, look, I knew Floyd was going to win. I think we all knew Floyd was going to win. I just didn't expect him to win that way. Uh, and and Dave is a is a guy who's like a boxing dude. And, you know, I was worried for so even when I called you, I was like, I look, I have no idea if you have any interest in this circus, but I would love I want to watch it. If I do, I want to come by you. I've watched a fight by your place in how long? Because uh, Dave, Dave was initially he was the guy who introduced me to the UFC because he was training at a dojo. Uh, was it in was it in Chicago or was it where was well, the, the mixed martial art one? Yes. The mixed martial art one was in 1994 and it was in Arlington Heights or actually it was Wheeling, I guess. It was um, uh, Shido Khan, bare knuckle karate boxing, and, and the guy. And we talked about this before. I know that the guy branched off, and he had his own deal. He was he was combining other arts, and that's before they had the term mixed martial yeah, arts. Yeah, he so was doing hybrid. Nineteen ninety four is also around the first two, uh, ep- not episodes. What do you call them? The first two UFCs. Right. Started then. That's but when it was no rules. Yeah, but you like, got turned on to it because the guy yeah. at the dojo brought in a tape. Yeah. And you went and saw it, and, you, and then you came and told all of us. You're yes. like, dude, you got it. We got to see this. You got to fucking see this. Because it was a human. It was human cockfight. It was literally a fight. It wasn't boxing. It wasn't MMA. It was. There were no rules. There were no rounds. It was. Let's put a karate guy in the same room with a taekwondo guy, and let's see what art is really 
reign, reign supreme in a real fight where there's no rules. Right. And and what happened is what Bruce Lee predicted what would happen 30 years ago, 40 years ago now, maybe even 50 years ago. He predicted that traditional martial arts was a, a mess yeah. and it would eventually just fall by the wayside. And that's kind of what happened. Well, a lot of that is falling apart now. There, there's these guys, there's one dude specifically who's in Asia and he's calling out all of the masters of all of the, all of these martial arts. Like he's like, he's a mixed martial artist. He's like, I'll fight all of you. I'll fight you in yeah. your, your dojo. I'll fight you wherever. And they'll, they'll tape it. Cause he fought a Tai Chi guy. Now look, <laughs> seriously, but to me, Tai Chi, I, we just know it as that. It's a form of Kung Fu, but it is, it is primarily, it looks um, like a slow motion ballet Kung Fu. It's a meditational thing. It's based on movements, combat movements. Yeah. But, people do it here in the park, but it's also yeah. very slow and you're yes. deliberate and it's just, it's more about discipline and concentration but meditation it it's like similar to yoga it's relaxation getting right. yourself you know but level. in in asia in certain parts of asia tai chi is a considered a an actual defensive martial art kung, it's a version of kung fu and they think you could fuck people up with it oh. so there's some guy who's like a fucking ninth level wing chun tai wee fucking guy and a uh, tai chi tai wee i don't know he might be a tai wee guy and uh oh, 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 tai wee and oh, oh, oh. some guy I, we went to school with Noah Tai Wee. Tai Wee? Um, and Ray Tai Wee. Oh, Kyoto Wabbit. Ray Tai Wee was disgusting. I hated fucking Ray Tai Wee. Kyoto Wabbit. Ray, Noah Tai Wee at least was like, I think he took a shower once, but like Ray Tai Wee Ray was, was a mess. Big, was a big heavy kid. Yeah, he was man. like if a mole was alive. Like just yeah. like if a facial mole then put on overalls, that was Ray Tai Wee. Oh my God, was he fucking creepy. He was just so disgusting and he had that like curly hair, but it was greasy. And then he, he had that sheen on his face like a fucking discount pizza. You know, like, you know how pizza at the top has that grease that people will blot it off? Yeah. That's just, he looked like he fell asleep face down in one of those fucking things <laughs> because he was just a greasy ass fat dude. And he literally would wear overalls with like, like without a shirt to school. <laughs> just junior oh. samples fucking hee haw motherfucker came out of they the corn and came to school. Uh, Edith. Yeah. I'm friends I'm, with her on Facebook. I probably, oh, shouldn't, I probably shouldn't say her name. I was trying to help you there, but you weren't following me. Uh, but she's changed her name since because she realized that she had a fucking planet for a brother. What a disgusting mess that dude was. And then he became a wrestler. And I'm, it was so funny. Like, oh, who I, would want to wrestle? That's it, yeah. right? That's, that's the only way you win because you're like, I don't want to climb into this guy's armpit stink. That's going to be fucking depressing. We, I think he was on a softball team that we played when we were out of school, like the Brown Eyes, early seasons of the Brown Eyes no. in 1990. Uh, 88, 89, right around that time. So he was on another team. And I remember, because he was so heavy, he couldn't run. So he'd hit the ball. And you could, yeah. I think I remember one of us, I don't know if it was me or Jeff, threw him out at first base from the outfield. <laughs> he got a hit. He got a legitimate base hit. But he, he stumbled out of the box and he couldn't maintain yeah, his because balance. He, well, because he does that Oliver Hardy yeah. walk to first base. It's just like, <laughs> so I'm like... Yeah, I'll throw him out at first. He's you know what, Ray Tyree, this is, you ever have, when you were a kid, you know, my brothers would do this all the time and it would make me sick. They eat cereal, okay? I hate that. No, I look, oh. hold on, I'm getting there. Okay. And I, because I love cereal. Well, you um, do. But, I, but I'll drink milk afterwards because you drink the milk in the bowl. So my sure. brothers would eat, you ever see people who eat cereal and they leave the milk in the bowl and they put it in the sink, but they don't dump the milk down the sink? Okay, and it has a film? Well, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a, a bowl, bowl of, milk. of milk. And then like six hours later, they didn't dump it down the sink. It's All still right. sitting there because they're waiting for their mom or their mom yeah, or yeah, their wife. Just too late. That's Ray Tyree as a human. <laughs> sitting bowl milk? He's leftover cereal bowl milk as a human person. I mean, it's just, he's just so fucking gross. <laughs> okay. I and just it. nasty. And it's like, it was just that guy, like if you bumped into him, you'd slide off. He just was so, <laughs> so and I, I'm not kidding when I say he wore overalls without a shirt. Like he would wear that to school. Uh -huh. Just this corn pone pig fucking asshole and I hated him <laughs> so much and I mean I then look I was nice to him I talked to him in school like I said because Noah was a badass Noah went downstate as a wrestler no his older was brother. actually more an athletic ver he was in, yeah he was a heavy kid a big he was what you'd call husky he was a farm boy he yeah. looked like a big husky farm boy yeah. and one of those dudes who could like throw a hay bale on his shoulder and walk sure. it over to a truck he was just that weird uh goofy ass cow milk and strong yeah but Ray just he was just a nightmare Ray just Ray looked like you know you know what Ray looks like it looked like Noah Tyree met uh, the mom from Gilbert Grape. <laughs> well, all right, I can see that absolutely. <laughs> but I was going to say if Noah Tyree met Kelly LeBrock from Weird Science, <coughs> and she was mad, she turned him into Ray Tyree. I think that's what Kelly LeBrock looks like now. Oh, well, she's had some trouble. Okay, I, I'm, I thought. That's but again, where you when were people going. get older, I can't be upset about that. I don't care. I would look, dude. I would still rail the shit out of Kelly LeBrock. Are you kidding me? I don't care what she looks like. They get to do it for the scalp. 
You got to tell everybody the Kelly. fucking story. You got to be like, yeah, man, I took apart Kelly LeBrock. And you don't have to be time specific. Like, yeah. I have to, when I, if I bang somebody, I don't have to bring out a calendar. If you just go, hey, I fuck Kelly LeBrock, everybody's like, yeah. Because all they Good remember is half shirt coming out of the shower and fucking weird science. Nobody knows that she looks like a garage sale now. <laughs> well, that's mean. Well, she kind of does. <laughs> she looks like a rusty spoon. It's looking depressing. And she, just her hair. I mean, yeah, I get that. And look, we all get old. I look like I'm a mess. I'm not fucking I'm not saying I'm better than Kelly LeBrock, but I am saying I would absolutely rail the shit out of her. And then I would tell you the story. and You'd be like, dude, you tell and everybody would high five me, too, because nobody would be like present day Kelly LeBrock or fucking uh, heyday Kelly LeBrock. Nobody wants specifics. You just I say do. you bang Kelly LeBrock. Well, I, I would I would charm you and I would just go, oh, man, it was great. And I'd walk away like I would you guys. What questions. do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and then walk off. Leave it unanswered. Mysteries. But, yeah, she's kind of a mess, but I don't care. But like, because I used to joke about Pam Anderson. I was like, you know, she's on her way down. I'll meet her in the middle. I'll well, get her. I, there is something to the idea that you know, uh, when somebody's a sex symbol in one decade, and and it's human nature to to go, wow, look what happened to them. But I don't. I I think people just do that. They kind of just do that. But that's along the lines of when we talked about the yeah. fucking Depp dressing up like Sparrow and everybody going, oh, I can't believe you fucking did that but fucking then, thing. You know, it's just everybody, everybody's got a fucking opinion about how it's bad like when people is. made fun of Ann Wilson for gaining all that weight, you know, when she, she gained all that weight, mm -hmm. it didn't affect her voice. No. Ann, Ann Wilson, I don't care, big, skinny, you know, whatever. Yes. Ann Wilson sing, you know. Yeah, she wails. And gets, and gets back to that singing thing you were talking about when you were talking about Beyonce. Linda Ronstadt is another one. I... When I found out that she had, um, what did she have, Parkinson's? She had something. She's got something where she can't sing anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a couple of years ago they diagnosed her with something where she, she's, she said it in interviews, I literally can't sing anymore. Uh, and when I hear that, 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 that sucks. That would be like if you went blind. It, well, you know what I mean? Where like if you could see forever and then all of a sudden then that one, because I mean, she, you know, she's well, so I, perfect. I guess the blind thing would work, but it's almost like, you know, something that no one else can do or not many people can do that when that gets taken. Oh, away. that's a good point. You know point. what I'm saying? Yeah, I was looking at it in the way of like well, something you know, that was so essential to you, like fish swim in water. Yes. Yeah, and you just sing. You can, still, you can still function in society. You know, it's not about that. It's about here's somebody that had a gift. Or, you know, it's like, you know, Picasso's arms fall off. You're like, well, yeah, that's awful, man. But get your arms back on. <laughs> Yeah, because if you have beauty stolen from you or some some amazing talent that well, so, I mean, whenever you see a football player like blow his knee out or something, you're just like, oh Jesus Christ, you know, it, it's yeah. just such a mess because because it, it, there's a timestamp on everybody, you know, fucking well, we, people you admire artistically or whatever, a musician. If a musician can't play anymore, like when Jimmy pa Jimmy Page in like the '80s and '90s, he was. I think he was just awful, dude. If you like get, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen went through a period where he just—I well, he, saw it. Yeah, I saw it live. Like, oh no, it was they so, did that to themselves, though. Yeah, they got caught up in yeah. drugs and booze and everything. I, I listen. Get the Jimmy Page and the Black Crows at the Greek Theater album. Yeah. Oh my God, it's terrible. I can. It, yeah. I mean, the Black Crows are awesome, but Jimmy and they defer to Jimmy Page. Yeah. That's the thing. You so can't, they what are you him, supposed to tell him? Right. Hey, you suck. And he just is a mess. It but just then I heard so him bad. when the, when Zeppelin reunited in two thousand and seven. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, Van Halen. Yeah. I, on the last that. tour, it's just no matter you know, I'll have the argument with you about Dave all day long, but but you cannot refute that Wolfie, fucking Eddie, and Alex were just this machine. Like they were this three pronged attack of genius, and and just they were locked in. Yeah. Uh, the the you know what my friend who was I was talking about music with, she was like, they I I saw them live. She goes, I was never into them. She goes, but they, they just looked like twin rock Mononoffs. Like they knew yeah. where they were going and what they were doing together. They were so locked in on each other. It's cool, and it's actually cool that it. I, I mean, I know Eddie and Alex take a lot of heat for being these like you know, bad guys, and Michael Anthony, who seems like the nicest guy in the world can't even hang with them you're like what are these guys really like but yeah. then there's something there was something cool about eddie looking over and seeing his kid on stage and that, that I, the first time we saw them with mm. wolfie was at the united center yeah i got i thought that was really cool because you could see eddie was rejuvenated the, unbelievably so that's what i say to people because yeah. there are people still to this day who are like they want mike back no and I'm man, like, Listen, you can't you, dude. <laughs> you don't understand the dynamic there man right yeah because the only that kid the only reason eddie's doing this is because of wolf because it's the, literally van halen yes yeah so he's he's the only reason he's on the road is because wolf is in the band wolf wolf picks the set list wolf does all you know he defers to him he's like whatever you want to play man we'll do it mm -hmm. and i'll learn it tell me whatever because he wants his kid to be immersed in his stuff and he wants yeah. to impress his son and and that's the only reason he tours is because he knows he gets to go out with Wolf and Alex. It's it's what he wants. Because again, he'll tell you what because he's a fucking 
goof. I mean, it's, yeah. Eddie just he, he'll he would do he would drink, he would go to his hotel room, yeah. and he would play into a box. He would play into a recorder, just noodle yeah. all night long after the show. Dave would go fuck eight chicks and, and whatever else, and Michael Anthony would climb into a whiskey bottle. <laughs> Alex would be jumping out of a pool onto on top of women, and then Eddie <laughs> would be locked in a room with a recorder and yeah. just playing all night because that's what he that's did. What he does, and he would escape with booze to do it. Um, and so he's just that kind of guy. Like he. A fun day for him is Alex comes over and they play all day at fifty one fifty. Yeah, they just go for they just record and and because that's who he is. Yeah, but the, the dynamic of of sharing something that you've been doing for thirty years and all of a sudden you look over, and it's your kid is on stage with you. That's got to be like yeah intense, and your kid's good. That's the other thing. And again, this is only my version of it. If you look behind you, the the, the drums. I don't touch those things anymore. Val Val, that's Val's do- domain back there. Those, those, his drums are set up his way, um, and sometimes he'll come down here, and I'll come down here, and he's at a point now where we can play songs together. Not like you know, working our way through Louis Louis. I mean, he he can play songs, and I I have the guitar or the bass, and I'm sitting there playing, and I forget that's my kid is over there, you know. And I look back, I'm like, hold, because I've played in a dozen bands, and you get caught up in what you're doing. It's no more, hey, I'm teaching my kid this or the basics of, of a 4-4 four, four time. He's doing a thing. He's playing a song, and I'm playing, and I'm he's keeping the beat, and I'm playing. You're not, I've known you 35 years. Sophomore say. year, I think. I think you, you know what, 37 year. years now. Yeah. It's 37 years. Um, and you're not overly emotional guy. I mean, you hold it together. You know, I've seen you, I've seen you, unfortunately, at funerals yeah. and wakes. I've seen you in the hardest of times and in the happiest of times. Mm. And you kind of even keel it. You know what I mean? Uh, there is there some medical assistance for that? Perhaps? No, no. That has nothing to do with it. Okay. No, I've always kind of just, I pick, I pick my shots. I mean, there's been times I haven't been happy of how I reacted, but it, it's pretty even keel. I've never, I don't, truthfully, I don't know if I've ever seen you mad, like raging mad. Like I've, like I get, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, you, <laughs> the one time I thought you were, you were faking a fight in my goddamn yard with fucking Wojcik. Oh, that's who we goofed around. Yeah, no, that's, I thought that's, were, that's a cartoon man. Of course, I was but never, I thought, yeah. but I'm saying that was the one time where I actually thought you were fighting or something was going on. I You've always yeah. been cool in kind of every situation I've seen you in. And now with Ava, your daughter going away to school, yeah. uh, I know that hits you pretty hard. Yeah, but not as hard as you, you sometimes like you do. You do this a lot where you think you you plan on being upset. Like I know this thing's coming and it's going to get me and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a, a wreck and this could happen and this could happen, you know, worrying about the future. Um to me it's I, I don't know what you're I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Uh I knew Ava was going we've known Ava was going to college. We knew the date she was going to college and the thing is it's it hasn't been as hard as you would think it would be because it's a natural progression. You know, it's, it's part of the surf. It's part of your life. You're supposed to, this is supposed to happen. So I haven't gotten, now I don't know how I would feel if she was like our buddies. One of our buddies' daughters is going to USC. I mean, that's, you're not going to see that kid till Christmas probably. Yeah. You know, Ava's only a couple hours away from us and actually she's probably going to come home this weekend. You know, So I'm, I'm not as bent out of shape as I thought I'd be. The the thing is though is I don't get I don't traditionally get upset over what normally triggers a quote unquote healthy person like you know it's I get caught off guard on the weirdest stuff the weirdest stuff will catch me off guard and like that's what's hard is you can't predict that but I see. for the most part I'm pretty it's been okay with her going because before she left she was an eighteen year old girl living at home she wasn't home for dinner anyway she wasn't uh, right. She'd come but home. now, but now the element. I mean, I, and you worry when she's here. But now, when she's far away, you worry. And I'm not. Look, I'm yeah. not trying to. I'm not trying to gin you <laughs> up or anything. Don't start putting <laughs> worst case scenarios. You know. But if if she let's say there was a fire. And uh, she, no, no. no. <laughs> say say she's playing fucking badminton and she falls and sprains her elbow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she can't call you and go, "Hey, well, come here now." And let's. Do this. It's just that weird thing where you have to relinquish a little bit of control and realize that she's an adult. She's moved on, and you're there for her if she needs yes. you. But you want to rush She's to her side got, and you can't. You have that initial, the initial instinct is to protect and to help. And that's a dangerous thing because if you do it too much, they never know what failure is. They never know what adversity is. Um, Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, she, not what's today, Sunday? Yeah. Right, week ago Saturday. I was at a softball tournament and it just so happened that she could not get her printer to work. Now that's something here at the house. Daddy, you know, yep. <laughs> come up the stairs, printer's <laughs> fixed, her computer's working. It's a small little thing, 
but she's not she doesn't know how to she's got to learn how to solve these problems on her own and yeah. she did that's the best part we have to gradually tell her look we're here i'll help you with whatever i can help you with but at some point you've got to go get the part you've got to figure out where that's where they sell the right cord you got to figure out and you're going to start doing stuff for yourself and what's i'll be i'm 50 and i don't want to do that shit honestly i, know, I well so yeah. I know how fucking weird and hard that is. Because the the downside of it is that you become a person that constantly has to rely on somebody else to do your stuff for you, and that's not a good way to be, especially if you're trying to make it at college. You know, I, right. I said, you know, you you're not going to have any help when you can't figure out a, a problem. You can call home if you want. Of course, you could call home, but you're going to have to learn how to figure this out because there's different kinds of maturity. She's mature enough to know that it's time for her to go to college. She's ready scholastically academically in her brain she's ready but she's not ready to live alone and she's going to have to learn how to do that yeah. and that's what we're trying to do right now it's right. hard and, and you and i have had that discussion too where you're like don't fall into the trap where you rely on people to do things for you um because i'll call you sometimes i'm like well i can't do this or you know i, I don't know what's going on or how am i and you're just like learn it just do it then well, you don't have to worry. You don't have to make a phone call. You don't have to fucking put everything on hold because one person couldn't do your thing. I don't rem I don't know if this is opening a can of worms you don't want to get into, but uh, seven or eight, well, maybe six or seven years ago, there were some problems you were having with the show and uh, availability of people having to do with the show. And I says, you know what? I go, you need to learn how to record this po podcast on your own because... I'm not saying that you uh, are going to make a decision and say, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to use this person anymore. I'm not going to have a producer. I'm not saying that. I was saying you just need to know how to do it in case there's a time when she can't do it. Like It was with, when Lily. Well, Lily would, would not be around to help you with something. Well, like she started might... to work more. She started to book stuff and go out of town and all that and started yeah. to put me in a situation. And then when I was dating Jill, I was traveling, and so then well, this Jill wasn't available for this that. This is before that. Well, but... Yeah. Right, but it shows that I didn't fix it then, and and so and until then you, when you finally did, right. It, I mean, just think of where you would be right now had you not learned how to. Oh, do I'd be it. fucked. I mean, yeah. well, because I was doing, you know, I <laughs> I would record chunks of the show in in my phone or whatever sometimes, and then I would literally email it to Lily to like a show yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Here, I go build this. this. Yeah, fake it. Fake uh, it. and and that was a fucking you know, and that's no fun for her because I mean, you know, because then unless we, that's your job. But it wasn't her job. I wasn't paying her no, anything. See, no, for you, real. you always do you equate job with money. I'm not. It, that's, well, that's, I mean, I paid her sometimes, but I mean, not not weekly yeah. to to go. Hey, stop yeah. everything you're doing and build this fucking show puzzle. Um, we we disagree on that. Yeah, I, mean, I always I, I think just feel that, I think that the money doesn't have anything to do with it. It's the principle of, am I helping you with this show? Am I the uh, producer? Am I the art director? Or am I the uh, music guy? Whatever that is. If right. I, if that person commits to that. Under the guise they know they're not getting paid, it's still a job, right? But and and she she yeah, I'm not she saying did. she didn't do it. She oh, did no, it a fucking because I would send yeah. her fucking drive audio and she'd edit it and put it up. I was sure. like, she didn't but care I, if she was getting paid or not. Right, it was but about I, the principle. I did. Yeah, I know. You know, and I felt terrible making her do uh, what I felt was because I mean I felt like if we're in the room and we're having fun and we're laughing. That's totally different because then then the work starts. Then you've got to go ahead and edit it and put it online. Yeah. But if I'm off somewhere on my own recording shit and, and a phone order and then just mailing it to you, now you're just a fucking drone. Now you're just coding yeah. at that point. And that's how I always felt bad about making her do that. And she would even say, "Just dude, what do you? What is your problem? Yeah. I'm happy to do it. I'm, it's no problem." Um, but I was always I would fucking cloud it up a little bit by by doing that kind of I shit. Don't think so. <laughs> um, but it's funny how you talk about. You know, with Ava, you, you, you're relinquishing control and you let her go and you do that sort of thing. But you've always been on an even keel. You know, I couldn't, I don't know what I would have been, because I, I didn't know what it meant to be a dad. You, you had your dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, your dad was challenging and he had, and he had stuff going on sometimes, mm -hmm. but he was still your dad. Yeah, he was, well, he was never a violent person. No, but I mean, yeah. but he had a different. Yeah, he had we've demons. All, as we've <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've talked a million times. Yeah. Everybody lives the life they led. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I... He wasn't Robert Reed in the Brady Bunch. Exactly. You know, he was more like Robert De Niro in Goodfellas. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's how I'm being, I'm being honest, yeah. completely. Um, he was more like the, uh, Robert De Niro yeah. in Bronx Tale. He was less Jimmy Stewart and more Jimmy Conway. So I mean, <laughs> that, that's who he was, uh, which is great. Yeah. But, I mean, but he also taught you manly, how to be a man. And he stayed there with you. And, he, and then you grew from that. And then you had your own kids and you imparted wisdom upon them. And you've, you've raised them in the way you've raised them to where I... I'm I'm envious and jealous of the people that they've become. Um, well, Val, uh, Val's a little 
That he's gonna, he's gonna be fucking fine. I don't. He's gonna be. He's, it's you know because he, he's like you without edge. He's you know weird, I mean? man. It's awesome yeah. though. But good. No, I because you know you know you know who your Val reminds me of. And this, this is totally truthful. Mike Scott when I was a freshman. Oh, when you were a kid. Yeah. Because he was, I mean, he's smart as hell and doing stuff, but also he, he didn't mind talking in, in, in an English accent with me yeah. for an entire weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just stupid stuff. Yeah. He literally had a beer can collection, and then we opened a can of Tiger beer <laughs> one night when I slept over at his house. It had been on a shelf for seven years. You we, guys used to do some goofy it's stuff. It's just dumb. So you we were, were Beavis and Butthead before they basically, came out. Basically, yeah, yeah. Honestly. Just uh, invented, inventing noises and just dumb shit. And just <laughs> inventing noises. Hit by the pitch. pitch. Just so stupid. Playing Strat, playing and playing our. We, dude, Mike Cubbage was a hero of ours. We played this one baseball game. We invented a dice baseball game. And, and Mike Cubbage, and for some reason, because we were in German class together, when you hit a home run, our home run call was it was on the Flugzug, because that's a train in, in Germany. Yeah. So they like, hey, pulls on the Flugzug. And then we'd, and we'd actually make our baseball car go around the bases. God, I love being 13. You know, I love being 13 so much, I never fucking stopped. Um, but I, but like, you're a dad and I, I, cause I, you know, as a dad, you know, you're like Charlie Brown with Snoopy. You're like that kind of dad. Like you're totally cool and you're there for him. But if Snoopy wanted to go off and hang out with Woodstock, you're great. You know who I would be? I'd be the little girl who found Snoopy and Snoopy come home and brought him in the house. <laughs> hey, Hey, can I keep him? Oh my God. I'm keeping Swinging him. him by I'm his gonna, head. I'm going to love him and hug him. I'm going to keep him front close. That's who I would be as a dad. Like um, I would, I wouldn't, yeah. I don't know if I would ever let my kid with the out of arms reach. You know, I just, I oh, worry yeah. how I would have been that, that uh, about that. Cause I wouldn't. And just that thing where you're trying to make them not you well the, the the weird thing and this happens in every generation it's not just ours it's only because we're going through it right now you know our high school experience was was what we know that's what we know yeah. that's high school to us he just started freshman year in high school my, my 14 year old son val started high school this week so all of my memories of freshman year are not really great you know there's a lot of uh you know bullying and I, I was never really bullied but it was there and the, the scaredness of whether or not the seniors were going to put you in a locker and right. all that 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 temperament and it was like that's what I remember about a freshman year but you know in all this time 30 40 years later whatever uh that culture is kind of going away at least where we live you know right. I don't know how it is in other schools but in our area they're com the kids are completely tolerant of everything they seem to be like there's no racism there's no how how great is that i think how it's phenomenal. hopeful is that you well, just you're yeah. just so excited and you hope it sticks i mean my 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 oldest has friends who are openly gay and i think that's the greatest thing in the world and i also told i told the reason i say that is because i told my daughter i go look i go i your mother and i don't care as long as they're good people whatever I personally didn't experience what you're experiencing until I went to art school. And that's the only reason I experienced it when I was 18. My friends, the people we went to high school with, they're all, you know, going to university. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't get exposed to that yeah. in the eighties. You weren't exposed to that. No, you know, because, because yeah. honestly, when we grew up, if you uh, got your ass kicked. Well, and if yeah. you called somebody a faggot, it was truly the worst thing you'd call them if you meant it. Yeah, yeah. If you just said it as a dumb word yeah. or whatever, which we did often. And that's how it got to be a slang where it didn't. Yeah, you know. where it didn't mean that. Yeah. But if you if you meant it, like if you meant because it just meant weak woman, gay, you yeah, know, it yeah. meant all that bullshit. And if you meant it, it was a terrible thing to say when we were kids. Yeah. Um, and that's why I see now you're 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 not it's not part of the lexicon anymore. And it no. shouldn't be. You know, you just you can't do that. So I, if Val's going to high school and I'm like, I, I would teasingly, I teasingly said to him, all right, have, you know, do good, have a good day, you know, don't let anybody get in your grill. I mean, that's what I just said. To him. He knows I'm kidding because that's what I would have said. To, that's what I wish somebody would have said to me in high school. <laughs> but I forgot, you know, first of all, he's been at football camp since the summer started. He's been in the weightlifting program since summer started. He knows his way around the school because he's been there. His, his freshman experience it's completely different and it's, yeah. it's great and it's been positive. And, and Kristen and I will ask him questions when he gets home from school and he's like, yeah, no, it was fine. You find your classes. All right. Yeah. I know yeah. where I'm going. I'm, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I mean, it's like, <laughs> who, who are you? Right. And also like, how big was his middle school? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't well, know. I mean, but it, was, it was a ton of kids. Yeah, I mean, it was like, big. Yeah. Okay. Cause I mean, we went to, there were so many different middle schools in Bolingbrook. Yeah. So when I went to Humphrey, it was the last that was the, I went because I went to Ward and Humphrey in Bolingbrook and they were smaller. 
because then you get to yeah, the yeah. high school, and that's where it's this confluence yeah. of it's like five different schools well, coming to one school. This is a big school. high school, yes. Yeah, so right, so that's why I'm saying that's yeah. the thing. It's daunting when you show up and you're like, yeah. oh my god, because there's all these new faces, all these strange people. Because I didn't know you yeah. in eighth grade. I didn't know you. I was on the you. other side of town. Hey, I didn't know you. Um, I didn't even know you at Ward because I, I wasn't there fast. I don't long remember enough. you at yeah, Ward. I wasn't there long enough. I don't know. I don't because well, I was hiding after I got my ass beat by Glenn Gardner. I know Glenn um, Gardner. He's a good buddy. Yeah, exactly. I know Jerry Daffron. I might have been at that fight. Uh, might, yeah, might have been. Jeez. I might have been cheering, cheering Glenn at the fight. Fight is a generous term. Uh, that was clearly not a fight at all. Oh, that's awful. That was me getting my ass whipped uh, and then hiding in shame for a week. Uh, but then uh, I went to, you know, so then you get into the big school and there's so many kids there and stuff like that. Yeah. So in our mind, you're just like, oh, my God, how's he going to fit in? How's he going to do it? But if he went to a bigger middle school, the high school might not even be that big of a change for him. Well, the fact that you see people you've known all your life and people you just met for football, I mean, it's it's a way different yeah. acclimation thing. But were you what were you going to say? Because you said you never see me get mad. Were you going to try to make me get mad? Is that, was that no. a test? Yeah, that's what I was going right. to do. <laughs> no, what I, what I meant was you're even keeled and you don't show a lot of emotion. So when you mentioned Ava, that's why we've talked about Ava going to school, and you said yeah. it hit you a little bit. Where it kind oh, of yeah. You. But I wanted to ask about, we talked about Eddie and Wolf. And Eddie oh, being yeah, able to, that's to right. look we across the stage and, see his kid and go, there. Jesus Christ. I mean, look what's yeah. happened. Look, and, he, and like I said, the fact that Wolf is good. He knows it's not nepotism. He knows he didn't bring his son up yeah. and whatever. His son's really good Even at what he does. Even if it is nepotism, who cares? The guy's, the guy's exactly. doing his job. But, there, but it adds a level of pride, too, when you yeah. see the kid holding it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, look, we, you could have a snot-nosed fucking Francis from Pee, Pee Wee's Heart Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> who's like, ah, you know, and you give him a guitar or ukulele, he's like, pling, pling, and you're like, oh, good boy. You know like what I mean? you, daddy. Yeah, there's a lot of difference yeah. th- between good boy and holy fuck. Look how did, good did he is. Did you see Ro- uh, Robert Tru- how do you say his last name? The bass player from Metallica. Trujillo? Trujillo. Trujillo. Yeah. The, the J's. Huh. Trujillo. He's full Mexican then. Trujillo. Trujillo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. So sometimes the Hispanics will tell take take the L, double L, or the J, and make it. Anglo. Okay. So he could be Trujillo for all I know. Yeah, no. He's Robert Trujillo. His 12-year-old kid is, I don't know if, I was, if he's 12 or he's close to 12, is playing bass with a real band, like a band of grown-ups. And it's really? A, it's a well-known band. Dude. And he looks and holds the bass the same way with the head in the, <laughs> and it is just ridiculous. And you're like, God bless. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and I imagine think, I think that's cool. Well, so that's what I'm getting to. Like I said, Eddie can look at Wolf, Trujillo can look at his kid. Yeah. And when you're down here, because uh, again, we we've seen Val. Val's my godson. We, yeah. So we saw him goof around and play. You know, maybe grab a drumstick or whatever when we were kids. But now the fact that you can look across and actually see him holding it down with you, and it just that's does well, that affect you? I guess my point is, you never get emotional. I never see you do uh, that center thing. Uh, do you look at him and just do you recognize? I mean, like you can say in it's the cool. moment, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I w- I'm, I'm not going to break down crying in the middle of the song. Well, I'm not I, asking I, you to, but, but I'm but just you... saying I ho- I know exactly what's going on. I'm not oblivious to it. I know exactly what's going on. But the tough part about it is that every parent thinks their kid's a genius. True. That's just natural. Yeah, I, your, I get You're it. programmed to be that way. So when, when I was... It's like everybody on Facebook thinks they're good looking. Because they'll put well, up a selfie and you know, it's like, you're just the like, problem with that is that everybody else will tell them yeah. they are. Well, of course, <laughs> because that's why you put the picture up. But in reality, you look like the fucking pinata at the end of a party. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, they're only doing it. So when they put their picture up, you're nice to them. Of course. That's it's all a fucking jerk off session. <laughs> yeah, it's a circle jerk. When Val was two or three, and I do it too. By the way, I'm doing. I'm not accepting myself from that. I mean, I'll throw up a picture of myself, and just, and I mean, I make sure I got the right well, angle. I well, make sure I'm looking the right way. Everyone's got a sense of vanity. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think that I photograph well at all. But if I find a good picture, I think I know what a good picture is. I'll hold on to it and I'll save that and I go that that's a good picture. I might use that for next week or something. <laughs> when, so when I don't look yeah. good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I uh, yeah exactly. I was like, um. But I was, what was I saying about Val? Oh, well, Val picked up the drumsticks at two or three and would sit on the drum throne. He couldn't reach the bass pedals, but it was cute to put a, it's cute to put a picture of a kid. You know, sure. He's a little kid playing behind these big drums and it was funny. But then I saw him one day, he, he had his right hand hitting the hi-hat and the left hand hitting the snare in real, for real, like quarter notes and, you know, eighth notes. And I'm like, what? the hell's going on (laughs) and i'm thought to myself don't flip out he's not a genius he's not a prodigy all kids do stuff that's kind of cool don't get don't be one of those parents but the more it was happening the more i started realizing i never showed him how to do that 
I mean, I showed him how to do certain things because I can play the drums a little bit. But he was already, it was clicking for him. But also, let, let's talk yeah. about this. Since he's been, since he was young, and I'm talking real young, you've always exposed him to the music you loved. Yeah. He's, he's heard I, them be- both. the Beatles and yeah. all that stuff. They, your kids grew up in a house of music. Yes. So even though you may never showed it to him, it's in his yes. DNA with you, and it's in his blood from hearing it. So he just instinctively maybe knew in his head that that's how that is done. But you never know what your kids are going to take from you because Ava had the same thing, and she could have cared less about being down here. I showed her how to hold the drumsticks, and she played. Well, thank God for that. She played a little bit. What's wrong? You need if more you got, girl drummers. No, no, girl drummer's <laughs> fine. But if you got an 18 girl, 18-year-old girl, girl who wants to hang around in the basement, eh, yeah. we, got, <laughs> we might have a problem there. But they never showed an interest in wanting me to teach them to play guitar. They didn't want, sure. Daddy, can you show me? that? No, they just, and I, I realized, you know, nobody said, hey, do you want to play guitar? I, I figured it out on my own. I figured the stuff's here. Let them find it. And they did. Yeah. And now he plays the piano. He plays the drums. And he's learning how to play the bass. So I'm like, okay, dude, just do your thing. I'm not going to bother you. If you want help, I'll give it to you. But. In yeah. between, in between riding his dingo to trap a feces monster, <laughs> whatever the fuck he was saying last night, he's playing. It's a. I come here, and uh, the voice from the loft. Yeah, is yeah. What he is now. He now there's a loft upstairs, and uh, it's his computer room. We made his game. We turned it into his game lounge room. So he's on that fucking again. I when I was a kid, we you know you played whatever PS4 or not, not even that. Fuck <laughs> that. You, they had a played, PS4 when you were a kid. I, I traveled a lot in time, um, <laughs> but we had a Sega, a Nintendo, all that shit. But everybody Nintendo. was in the room and yelling and screaming <laughs> yeah. and having fun well now these guys are all playing remotely with a fucking earpiece so all you hear you just hear one side of an (laughs) eight-sided conversation and it's all nonsense like that was like his the wrong side to be on (laughs) oh yeah no kidding well can we say what his username is or do we will people Uh, find it um, it, he made up a he made up his username is make it a fake name but with the with the proper modifier in the beginning he's dr joe washington It's so stupid. Now, like, that's, his, not, yeah, that's his name uh, as they fight. Yeah. That's his name as they explore yeah, and kill Dr. dinosaurs. Joe Washington. That's Dr. Joe Washington. It's not, uh, you know, like, you know, X- X-ray 243 or nope. killer 212. It's, it's Dr. Yeah, Joe AR-15 yeah. in your face mug. Yeah. No, so when you play these murder games or, or battleground or whatever it is and you kill somebody, it'll it'll say on the screen, you know, you you were shot by, you know, Hammer Fist 23. Because you were killed by Dr. Joe Washington. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just ridiculous. But the Uh-oh. stuff that he says out of context, you're hearing it coming down from the loft, and he's just, he's just weird, man. But funny weird. But awesome weird. Yeah. I mean, he couldn't help but be that way with you as a dad, and then all I of his guess, uncles, yeah, and the, I mean, yeah. just the nonsense he's had to sit through. I mean, I mean, last all right, look. Fight, yeah. Well, we're watching the fight last night, and uh, and uh, <laughs> he comes down to, and I'm I I've lost myself a little bit here because I don't swear in his house. It's like you know because with the kids, you it's say always that, watch but your you language. Always do, you always but, do, but not a ton. Um, but I'm usually good about watching it. But for some reason this weekend, I have not been good at it at all. But I will say this. Every time I would swear or say something dumb or silly, yeah. he laughed. I Because I would yeah. see him across the he room. And he would, he would yeah. smile and, and laugh. And I'd go, language, sorry. Yeah. It was just the, the next thing out of my mouth. He knows. And, and I, I, here's what I, what I did. We were talking about before about uh, being emotional. You know, I, we were driving Ava down to her college. And we're right, let's say, maybe 10 minutes out from getting there. And I told uh, Kristen, I go, you know, Mike. My, my, said some nice stuff about us going to school. I want you to hear it because I was going to skip all the way to the end of the podcast when you started talking about Ava going to college oh, yeah. and playing the Taylor Swift song. I wanted them to hear it. Well, I played it because I know I knew in my head I don't have to worry about my swearing because this was the end of the show and it was yeah. a part – um, but I forgot that you said stuff like, you know, she's a fucking knock. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> dude, dude, hit the button. Hit the button. But at this point, you know, she's 18. He's 14. They've heard these words. They they yeah. don't care. So I let it play. Oh, I said she's yeah. a fucking knockout, didn't I? You said, yeah. In oh. a, I again, we both assume that it was. Yeah, it was this. And it was there was there was everything you said was great. It was really nice. <laughs> it was a great way to end the show. But there were F words in it all the time. And I, I, I completely forgot about it. Cause, and I'm like, Wait, maybe that wasn't the best thing to play. I'll just play the Taylor Swift song. I know she doesn't swear. Uh, and I tried tried to give such a, a motivational <laughs> was, movie tribute. It oh, was. was. But it was you were. Yeah, there were some F bombs in there. So here's the thing. Just be a good dad. Be a good kid. Dad to your kids. If I can bring you anything from this show, <laughs> don't be me. Be Dave. Don't be don't be, uh, don't, uh, be you know, don't grab the dog by the throat. And go, Ma, Ma, can I keep can I do this? Because I, I got news for you. This is what happens when you're a dad like Dave. You got a, a son who comes down. He plays the drums. He's Dr. Joe Washington. He does good things. He get good <laughs> grades. 
Yeah. When you're a dad like Dave, you've got a beautiful daughter who goes off to college and is learning things and is not daunted or scared by those things in the least. She's ready to tackle life. She's not going to hide from it. She's going to go ahead and take care of all the problems she needs to do because she's been given the confidence and the knowledge that A, she can figure it out on her own and B, if she doesn't, she's got a great support system behind her to take care of if she doesn't. Uh, but if you're a dad like me, your kid's going to wind up on retard lane and you know this is going to happen. <laughs> So if you don't want your kid walking in a circle for 28 years, stepping on his own dick and drooling. How fun is that place at, ha at Halloween? Oh, my God. Is it great? But they keep knocking on the same doors every single fucking time. There are other houses outside of Retard Lane. I don't get it. Marp. Marp. Get out of my house. Marp. You guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt comedy .com. You guys can be Marp. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. I'm there. I'm lurking. I'm writing funny things occasionally. Find me. And uh, also, here's the thing. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I'm bad. I'm nationwide. What's Snapchat? Snapchat. Dude, I talk fast. That's fine, but you got to say the right word. So on Snapchat, I'm Mike40YOB. On Instagram, I'm Mike40YOB. Find me in those places. Send me photos. Like our, 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 I know, look, I have a friend on Snapchat. She's going to Tennessee this week. I'm looking forward to photos from Tennessee. Tennessee. I've got a buddy in Taiwan. Where is he? He's in uh, Vietnam, I think. And he sent me a photo of like their secret police. And I wrote him, I'm like, are you dead? Like, how do you get a photo of the Vietnamese secret police? <laughs> and because uh, they, they wear like a different colored uniform. He's like, yeah, you never see these guys in public. And I'm like, well, do you want to snap photos? Or you want to go to a bomb shelter, dude? Get out of there. Uh, so anyway, so I'm on Twitter. And like I've mentioned, I'm, you can email me. You can find me at Facebook.com. But also Instagram and Snapchat, mike 4 oyob send, uh, send me photos. Find me there. Send me notes. And look for my posts, few and far between. I never make a public Snapchat post, but I guess I should probably. But I'll answer you if you write me. Uh, our friend David Hernandez, I'm here in his basement, David Mex Hernandez. You can find him at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Does all of the music, all of the artwork for this fantastic show. He and his son, uh, my godson Val, they are drumming away and playing. They're on the theme song at the end here. Go ahead and listen to that. Um, but you can find David at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Also, you can go to artbydmh.com, A R T B Y D M H.com. Uh, and get him to do some custom artwork for you. I mean, he just uh, he did a, a painting for a wedding a couple of weeks ago, which was beautiful. He will do he will paint anything you need him to paint. Now he also has uh, Valscapes and Guycons, some of his older pieces that are available for sale. You can browse those over there at ArtByDMH.com. You want to jump in? Yeah, I, I kind of want to put this out there. I've been thinking about about it. Um, uh, oh, the caricatures of people and the, like I like the painting I did for the wedding. I don't know if anybody saw it. I've done those for friends of mine. Uh, to put on their Facebook page, I'm in, I'm kind of interested in maybe doing that if somebody would want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in a lot this, of stuff this, if people want to pay for well, it. This, as, as, it is my job, kind of, you of know, freelance artist. I'll, I'll I'll but I'll generate my own uh, uh, jobs by thinking that I'm just seeing if there's any interest out there. You know, if you want me to do your your uh, a profile picture similar to the one that uh, you that uh, you saw on the painting for the wedding. You know, just your head and shoulders or something for Facebook. Just let me know because if that's something that I could do, I'd, I'd be happy to do it for a, a discount. Yeah, and if you were thinking of like wedding gifts for people or anything like that, you know, uh, uh, I mean, dude, everybody loves their own face. So by all means, get fucking Dave cracking and let him paint somebody. And uh, and like I said, there's also look a perfect example would be a couple of weeks ago the Brad Pitt one he did for the Nazi show. Uh, yeah, it, that, it just that's... it freezes you. Honestly, when you see it, you just go, Jesus Christ, because I'll tell you what, go look at the clip because you actually put the gif in the in the comments. Well, somebody said, oh, this looks very Brandoish," And I almost got the impression that they didn't know the reference. And right. Maybe we we're concerned about that every week. We're like, does anybody really <laughs> is anybody know to get this? Yeah. Does anybody know what this is from or why it's in here? You know, I'm, I always worry about that. Is it, does anybody get this? Right. And what do I say? You say, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's for us. Yeah. Uh, and they'll get it. Anybody because uh, you always work just, at the top of your intelligence and you and say everybody yeah. will catch up. Make me laugh or I'll punch you in the head. And I said, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> Actually, I said, that's probably why I'm not dating much these days. That's my <laughs> opening line. I'm um, going to throw you on the table and punch you in the face. I'm going to go down on you in front of a college crowd. <laughs> my friend Dave somehow thinks you'll get punched in the face, but I'm all about just getting you to fucking get your thighs shaken. All I'm right, just so. happy to get my forehead wiped. <laughs> for the record. Well, I got news for you. When I'm done going down on her, she's going to have to wipe my forehead. Because <laughs> I am fucking good at that. All right, so... Yes, we know. Yeah, of course. Well, I can, well, fuck. I got Look, I'm good at three things. I got to talk about her incessantly. 
So, uh, so there you go. So Dave's willing to do that kind of thing. Contact him at artbydmh.com, A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com, or find him at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and get him through there. And he will go ahead and do anything you'd like him to do. As long as you're paying, he's painting. Uh, that wasn't bad. Put that on your website, I think. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was really clever. Uh, with the, and the pause and everything? Yeah. Actually, take uh, out that whole sound yeah. bite and use that. Uh, our friend Ryan Dirks is the web dude for this show, and I, I someday I'll get him to change the website because I love my website, but uh, I need more. We got to let's talk about that now. We need new uh, web stuff. All right, so let's yeah, go I ahead. Know. Let's change the website. I remember when you told me once a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. And you told me to jot some down ideas, and I did. I've not received any of them because you never followed, asked me for them. Well, again, this is all about the discipline that I'm instilling in my life. All right, this so coming this all, week, this all changes. This week changes yeah. everything. Yeah, we're going to start anew. Yeah, I'm like Earth, Wind, and Fire, buddy. Yeah. I, I wait to September. Yep. And that's when I get it done. Do you remember? I remember. All right. Uh, very. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Ryan Dirks is our web guy. Uh, Giovanni. Giorgio Peluso, super fan Giovanni. Not super fan of uh, uh, me, but super, super fan, fan of Gio others. Super fan is a friend. Certainly. <laughs> Uh, he did our YouTube channel, and you can go check out his podcasts, Pod Gods, as well as... Uh, Is that with Parker in Dallas? No, actually, that's, but uh, Parker and Dallas were generous enough to loan the name to uh, our friend Gio for his podcast. They got grounded or something. Uh, they did indeed. We, uh, God, I should use one of those on Anchor. Um, <laughs> Dallas? I'll do it today. I'll, you know, when we're done, we'll record an Anchor thing, and we'll do that today. All right. Uh, so Gio's that guy, so go check him out uh, and check out also his... He does all the Adam Carolla love line stuff. He's, he's embedded in them like a goddamn uh, worrisome tick. So please <laughs> look at all the worrisome cool tick. He's a, well, worrisome tick. I want to be in that band. <laughs> I actually saw them on the second stage at Lollapalooza. They weren't bad. Did they open for Spaghetti Lupus Ghost? <laughs> Spaghetti and the Lupus Ghost. Favorite Hardy Boys book of all time. Sorry. That's okay. No, dude, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, because literally, it was, I was waiting yeah, for you but, to stop laughing so I could say it. But, but I, fucking... I said it while I was laughing, but and I probably here, butchered right, it. Well, let's yeah. fucking talk about this. All right, before the show, Dave's like, look, I never know if you want me to throttle back. And I, I, you want, and I go, dude, if, you're, if we're talking, we're talking. I, the whole point of having you here is because it's funny. So let's be funny. I don't, you don't ever have to defer to me joke-wise. Oh, we're going to be funny. Uh, well, I, I, I should probably told you this yeah, earlier yeah, in the show. Yeah, yeah, duh. Uh, but yeah, so I don't, I, he's always like, do I defer? Do I fucking hold back? And I'm like, don't hold back, dude. Fucking, no. you got something funny to say, say it. Don't Cause we'll build on it. You know, you're never, you're never stealing funny. If you're adding funny, it just adds more funny and I get to be funny too. The only reason I brought it up is because I, I had heard you say that, you know, you like the show. Obviously your, your preference would be to have you and Lily doing the show the way you were in the, yes. back in the day. And I've always kind of said, well, you know, I can adapt. I can, I don't have to be on the mic. I can, or I can just kind of, that's all I was asking. Do you want me to oh, throttle back a little bit? So it's more of that, the way you Oh, no, no, no. Be. Well, yeah, but then I told you, I said, no, yeah. be funny. Cause the point is you're here, be funny. And I, I never, you know what? I never sat on Lily either. I said, talk, if you got something to say, jump in. Yeah. Um, she was the one who she would want to defer because it wasn't her interest to be online. That's why we never got her a microphone. She's like, I don't want to be on mic. I just don't. Um, and we did, and then when we did the one show where she was on microphone, it was a powerful show. It was great. Uh, so anyway, uh, Giovanni does all that cool stuff for us. He's the best. And go check Super out all fan, of his uh, Gio. podcasts, uh, pod gods, and his Adam Carolla stuff. Again, embedded like a worrisome tick. Uh, <laughs> and please remember that uh, I am on the Anchor Station, as I've mentioned. Uh, right now, if you go to it's Anchor FM, you can look up the forty year old boy. Uh, but right now, and it's, it's actually anchor.fm slash Mike four O Y O B. You can find me on there, but it's more important that you download it to your phone because they are trying to get young people and young people use their phones and nobody uses computers or laptops anymore. And I wish that was truly the case because I need a new laptop and I'm in the market for it and I got to go ahead and grab one. But for, you know, and the prices don't come down. I thought for sure. I was like, well, nobody uses them anymore. Right. So then I can go ahead and get one for cheap. No, you cannot. Uh, but get the Anchor app. Download it because it makes them think I'm a hitter. If they ask who, uh, why you did it, just tell them I sent you. And then we've got the 40-year-old boy station on there, and I'm doing all sorts of chunks and clips and everything where you go ahead and put it on your phone. Anchor app, find me, Mike 40, uh, 40YOB, but also just look up the 40-year-old boy, and I'll come right up. And uh, we've done uh, – I do them uh, – I want to say every day, but I don't. I do them basically every other day. Uh, and I, you know why? Cause I keep telling myself people don't want to hear them. It's the dumbest fucking weird imposter syndrome, garbage nonsense that I have in my brain. But in my head, I'm like, well, why would anybody want to hear me do like those two five minute chunks? Well, cause they do. You're listening to this now, aren't you? So why the fuck wouldn't I do it? And also that'd be a way to get new people on board, right? If I went ahead and did more content on anchor. So I'm planning on doing it. So download it to your phone. Listen to the clips that we have that some of them, again, they disappear in 24 hours. But, uh, but if you're always on there, you'll always hear me. And uh, otherwise, you can find me at anchor.fm slash Mike40YOB. That's anchor.fm slash Mike40YOB.
folks out there in podcasting land that the Monday Night Tease is ending. It is winding up its run. I think 12 years is the longest running, best, hottest, most pink, fucking wet labia in your face, nipples in your eyes, podcasting burlesque show in the world. One of those doesn't belong there, probably the podcasting part. But it's uh, it's the biggest, longest running show in Los Angeles, and it's coming to an end. Tickets are available now at uh, brownpapertickets.com. Put in Monday Night Tease, put in our friend Lily Von Stupp's name, and you can find that. Or... Just join Facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and you'll see dates, you'll see performers, you'll see what's coming. Lily should be uh, you know, bringing back some of her favorite shows from the past, from what I understand. I don't know exactly what she's got planned, but I know it's going to be amazing. Hoping to make the scene myself at a few of these final Monday Night Tees shows. Tickets are available now. And I don't know when the final one is. People are always contacting me. They're like, when is the next one? I Truthfully, could be this week. Could be next week. Could have already been this past Monday, and I'm talking for no fucking reason. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, the lights are out. So the tickets are available at brownpapertickets.com, and uh, just put in the name Lily Von Stupp, put in the name Monday Night Tees, and uh, be happy that that exists uh, for now. But go and check it out before it disappears. Uh, you know, we've got sponsors for this show. Dave, I don't know if you're aware of that. Uh, first of all, here's a sponsor, the name Dave. That's why I keep saying it over and over, even though I know you don't like it. The name Dave paid me to go ahead and call you Dave because it wants a place <sighs> in the lexicon. It wants a place in the lexicon here of the money, uh, the forty-year-old boy. Okay, Mikey. Uh, well, uh, see, uh, that fools me because I like Mikey very much. Keep saying it. I will. No, you probably shouldn't. Okay. Uh, so our friend David is here, and he is. Uh, uh, so what was I saying? What, is, what was I pitching? You said oh, something about a sponsor, and yeah. you being sponsored by the name Dave. We got so many sponsors. Is this the thing with the lubes and the g- stuff? Are you talking about getthebutters.com? Is that Butters from South Park? Uh, um, no, please. This is Butters from Michigan. I don't want him near my butt. Uh, but you put him in your butt because then he wriggles <laughs> around. in your butt. <laughs> put a telephone in, in your, your butt. butt. Put a dinosaur bone in, in your butt. butt. Say, put, no, put a radiator <laughs> in your butt. butt. Say, put a refrigerator in, in your, your butt. butt. Say, see you later in, in your butt. butt. 
All right. Uh, no, Jerome is our good friend in Michigan, and he runs GetTheButters.com. Uh, he's got uh, butters and balms and lubes and bombs and masks and, and grainy stuff. And, uh, <laughs> grainy stuff. Yeah, you can want that grainy stuff. That's important. But uh, he's there, so go to GetTheButters.com. When you buy something, use the code 40YOB, and it lets him know that you were there because we told you to go there. And I will also tell you this. Uh, our friend Jerome, he sent me a gift in the mail. What was it? Well, I'm going to tell you about it later in this podcast. Okay. But right now I will tell you that he sent me a gift. But thank you, Jerome, for your gift. We'll get to it later. But, uh, but it's, I, it's a funny gift, at least for me it was. I mean, it's a great gift, but I'll get to it in just a second. Rubik's Cube? <laughs> Very close. Okay. Remember that fucking snake that tried to take the place of the Rubik's Cube? Rubik's Snake? Yeah, I don't think it was a Rubik's Snake. It was just like Sneaky Snake or oh, whatever the fuck. Or color. Snake. Yeah, fuck that. Go, yeah. You gotta go cube. You gotta go square. You gotta get the original. Could you solve one? No. Let me. I tell you this though: if you have a Rubik's cube, yeah, and you buy lubes, balms, butters, and bombs, yeah, you can get that Rubik's cube lodged directly into your ass. Could, what if your ass could solve it? Holy shit! What if you put it in unsolved and then and you yeah, crapped it out and it was completely fixed? I don't think you just maneuver your butt cheeks a little right. and, it and then comes you shoot fixed. it out. It you comes could, up fixed. You'd be famous for that. See, now here's the thing: Rubik's snake or sneaky snake? Yeah, he goes right in your ass. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't even worry about solving, no. solving that puzzle. You just want him up there. You just got a snake in your butt, uh, which is fantastic. Oh my god! Put a snake in, in your butt. butt. Put yeah. a rake. <laughs> Put a piece of cake in your butt. Put a corn flake. <laughs> Put a big steak. Put. Oh man, I, I was gonna say yake. Why do I have the name yake in my head? I don't know. Uh, put some Yake or Meister in your butt. That doesn't rhyme. Uh, it does. It, well, if you're going to rhyme Meister. Put Greg Lake in your butt. Oh, no. Put ELP in your butt. <laughs> put one ski in your butt. <laughs> put me in your butt. <laughs> put a tree. <laughs> all right. So uh, this is all available at GetTheButters.com, this song, all of it. Uh, but again, bombs, butters, and lubes, and uh, all that stuff. Bombs, bombs, and bombs, and lubes, and masks. What are bombs? Uh, they're it, bath bombs. Like B-A-L-M, bomb? I, I, I say that different. There's butters, and bombs, and bombs, and What's a lubes. Bomb? A bath bomb's like this. It looks like a smoke bomb. Remember those smoke bombs you used to yeah. buy? You just throw it in the bathtub, and, whew, and it, just, it fills your bathtub with, no, with uh, loveliness. Oh, with I'd rather slickery. have smoke. I could be like Prince and when doves cry. Jerome might be able to do that. Dude, Perhaps. make me a bath smoke bomb so I can come out of the bath all dramatic. Don't take a bath, by the way. Oh, awful. Dig if you will. Nobody no. Wants to sit. no, come on. Nobody wants to sit in their own filth. All right, so bombs and butters and lubes and balms, all available from GetTheButters.com. Use the code Mike for OYOB. Uh, remember that we've got our oh, – oh, oh, should I talk about the other sponsor? All right, so well, here's you've the got thing. a right, serious sp- you got Dude. a sponsor there that's All right, now here's the deal. There's paperwork involved. There's a listener to the show his name is Paul and he reached out to me and he's like, "Dude, by the way, Paul gave me a gift. I should talk about that at the end of the show." <laughs> Uh, you have many unspoken gifts. Paul's a sponsor, and he's like, hey, Mike, can you, you think you could do this for me? And it's a charity. And, uh, and he's like, what would it cost to sponsor your podcast to talk about this charity? Now, here's the deal. I don't, I, it's a charity, right? Yeah. And Paul's always been a good guy. Paul saw me in Washington, D.C., uh, and he drove all the way from West Virginia, I believe, to do that. And then he saw me, I think he saw me one other time in another city with his lovely partner, Gloria. And he's a good guy, and I like Paul. So I was like, all right, dude, what's your charity? And he said, oh, check this out. And then he sent me. 45,000 words. Is it a reader's charity? Uh, yeah, it's a cha- well, no, it's, a, it's all it's free words. I said, just <laughs> grab one out of the fucking barrel and be happy. So he sends me these words, and I, I mean, dude, I, I, it was just, you know what it looked, I, I swear to God, this is totally true. It looked like the instructions you get with like a stereo or the stuff from Ikea. Oh, they're diagrams. Holy fuck. I'm like, dude, I can't. So I tried to make sense of all this verbiage, and then I wrote him back, and I go, Paul, and part of me just wanted to, I just wanted to cancel it. I know it sounds stupid, <laughs> but I just wanted to go, nope, forget it. But instead I go, man, if you can somehow make sense of this word salad and fucking get it to me, I'll do the best I can. So all he did was he, he set up the band. They played near my God to thee. He rearranged some of the chairs on the deck of the Titanic and he smashed me right into a fucking word iceberg and he emailed it to me. And I mean, so I'm going to go through this, all right? I'm going to try to hit as many points as I can well, Mike, or do what I can. It's for charity, though. Which is right. But yeah. at, the, at the end of this, the charity's going to have to be like, say, Mike's uvula because he burned it out reading 45,000 words. This is a, it's still ostensibly an entertainment show. Now, I'm going to read this, and we're going to do the best we can. All right. All right. What? So it's, uh, look, what we're looking for is we're looking for donations. Okay. Uh, for canine officers. Dog police? Yes. The dog police that have inside of your yard. Uh... <laughs> 
So <laughs> dog police. Uh, you know Whoa. what's really weird? Yeah. That's actually in the copy that he sent me. I, please, please, please sing dog please police. Sing dog police parody. <laughs> Because I love when other people want me to do songs that they thought of. Oh, That's sure, great. yeah. yeah. Hey, Dave, could you record this? No. All right, so I'm gonna, I, I'll give those uh, things at the end. He actually gave me like their tax ID number because this is another thing. He's like, it's a charity for this, and I go, look, dude, you gotta tell, I gotta find out if it's a real charity. Like, you can't just tell me it's some charity, and then all of a sudden, this chick absconds with the money to fucking ruin. Wait, you're saying that the dogs have set up a fake charity? Well, I think a woman may have oh, been because I thought like, you were going to blame well, like the we actual dogs. About, no, fuck that. Like we just talked about, with like a dog funeral when they have a dog, like they play taps for it and they put them in a uniform and they bury him in the fucking ground. Share, share if you like this, if they should be treated, no, they don't, yeah, they're no, dogs. He's a dog. He doesn't know what's going on. No, if he wasn't dead, he'd be eating a pile of shit, and that's not even a lie. Like that's what they like. <laughs> And you just, you, you know, it's not even like he chose it or he wandered. By. And, and again, not even because he likes it. Bullshit. The dog's just like, oh, it's that shit. I'll eat it. Boom. And he does. Well, I'm just like, I understand the idea of respecting a, a, an animal that performed for the, the military, but treating it like it's a person, like you're only doing that for yourself. You're not, the dog doesn't care that you play taps. Yeah. And another thing, too, that there's a double standard. Because you think when dogs came back from Vietnam, anybody called them a baby killer and spit in their face? <laughs> no. There's no Rambo dogs. No, but you do that to a guy named Roger from Connecticut. You Jeez. spit in his face, call him a baby killer. And then a fucking German Shepherd gets off the plane. You salute it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, all right. So. So it's canine officers. Well, but boy, but it's called protection for paws. Like P-A-W-S. Oh, I thought like for stopping in the middle of a, that paws. No, it's protection for paws. Okay. All right, so uh, so again, I'm, guys, bear with me and brace yourselves because this is going to be a fucking it's going to be awesome word it's tsunami. For, it's for charity. Oh Christ! The purpose of this charity is to raise donations for canine officers. It's called Protection for Paws, uh, and then the supplies are donated to departments free of charge. Now, like I said, I had to, I wanted to make sure that this chick was on the up and up. Yeah. I don't know who this person is because again, she could just steal the funds and buy her own fucking dog. I get no idea. Dog handcuffs. Supplies that have been donated so far: bullet and stab proof vests, eighteen hundred dollars each. Now, wow. I, I don't know how many junkies are out there stabbing dogs. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I didn't know hey, that was a real problem. There's a huge dog gang problem. <laughs> A lot of people don't know about it. <laughs> that cop rolls up with his dog, and the junkie just gets in like a defensive pose. And goes, Come on! <laughs> He's got a fucking switchblade, <laughs> clicks it out, and the fucking dog comes at him. Don't make a move! I'll stab your dog. <laughs> you think you're gonna take me in there, Rover? I don't fucking think so. Come on, Max, bring it on! How's this gonna help if the dog gets shot in the face? Well, uh, well, don't we? But maybe you buy a mask or something, I would suppose. Uh, are there helmets? We no, can get them helmets. not yet. All not right. yet. So a vest. Bullet and stab proof vest. Right, that's good for me. Naxalone. Or no, sorry. Nal- Nalazone, which is Narcan for accidental opioid, opioid, opioid overdose during drug searches. <laughs> the dog party <laughs> too hard with. Whoa, dude. <laughs> Rough. Shouldn't have sniffed all that. Rough, dude. <laughs> How you feeling after last night, Max? Rough, dude. Oh, dear. all right. Uh, heat systems for canine patrol cars to automatically open a door or warn the handler that temps in the car are getting dangerous. Oh, yeah. You don't want to leave your kid. Yeah, that's just. But uh, but you've seen these cops with dogs. Nobody leaves a dog in the car. Uh, cops, cops go in a donut shop or whatever, they bring a fucking dog. I know. I know a canine, uh, a canine police officer. Really? Yeah. The and he, dog I mean, or the he's, guy? A, he's a human. A guy. He, okay. But he, he had a dog in his mm-hmm. squad car. I see. I don't think you leave. You know, you've got to assess the situation for and, Unless you know you're going to a, a hot scene and you have to have the dog out. So I can okay. see why you might leave the dog in the car for a little bit. Makes sense. All right. Uh, so, again, protection for paws. These are, this is who these people are. Uh, below is a suggestion for people to follow about the fundraising event in September. And here's what he says. I'm not sure this needs to be pushed where, uh, with the wide area your show reaches. Maybe cash donations would be a better route to pursue. And all cash donations are tax deductible. I can you promise you this. It's a strictly volunteer organization. Unless operating supplies are donated, everything has been paid for out of pocket. Everything goes straight to the charity. There isn't a bunch of overhead expenses. He discussed it with Tina. He agreed uh, that she could gift a protection for paws sticker for a $20 donation and a T-shirt for every $50 donation. For your dog? Uh, well, I'm assuming for people, oh, I hope. Oh, oh. Uh, so what it is is if you make a PayPal donation to these people, and I will be giving addresses in just a second, uh, you will please include your mailing address in the note section of the PayPal payment section. And a $20 donation gets you a protection for pause sticker and a $50 donation gets you a protection for pause t-shirt. And uh, please tell them that the 40 year old boy sent them in the notes so they can see if they come from me. They want to know that I'm a hitter. They want to mm-hmm. know that I'm saving dogs to and yeah, fro. You're into the vest thing. Uh, teen is the main contact for this. Uh, Paul is just a friend of the cause. He's supporting her. And uh, the pause cause. 
Yeah, he comes up, he shows up in his truck, he's a good guy, he brings, he does a thing. So here, I guess they wanted me to read this at the bottom. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, here's Paul's phone number if you want to call him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if anyone wants to find friend, uh, our friend Paul Pepper on Facebook, he's on Facebook, and he's also uh, M-D-D-H-A-T-T-R on Instagram. That's Mad Hatter. Paul Pepper's on Facebook and Mad Hatter on Instagram, and he's the guy who coordinated all this because he loves dogs. He loves a dogs. dogs. Have you heard about the biggest canine event in the Mid-Atlantic region? The 2017 Mid-Atlantic Brothers in Blue Bash, Benefiting Protection for Paws? OMG, it's going to be absolutely amazing. 800 people, including canine handlers, law enforcement professionals, and law enforcement supporters are coming from all across the United States to be a part of this incredible event. It's being held on September 30th at the Hagerstown, Maryland Community College from 7 to 11 p.m. Dave, you think they got food? I hope. The food is going to be absolutely amazing. Will it be hot dogs? It's catered by Mission Barbecue of Hagerstown with all the beer provided by Flying Dog Brewery. Dogs can't drink beer. No, but their owners can, and then oh. the dogs can drag them home. <laughs> but first, dog, put on your stab-proof vest. <laughs> I understand Hagerstown's a rough neighborhood. <laughs> that uh, guy took my beer and stabbed my dog. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, the Mission Barbecue, like if you donate a certain amount, you go to this thing. Hey, you can only have one plate of food, correct? Usually a charity, you know, you, you just get it. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet, Dave. I'm there. Filled with sliced brisket, pulled chicken, pulled brisket, sliced chicken, green beans, green chicken, pulled beans, sliced bacon, and cornbread. Green chicken? <laughs> Some of that might not be true. I love green chicken. <laughs> but fill your plates. Oh, green chicken. Bamba lamb. Oh, green chicken. Bamba lamb. Got to get a big plate. Bam, bam, ba, lamb. And don't be late. <laughs> bam, ba, lamb. Chicken tastes great. Bam, ba, lamb. Uh, wait, you know what? I, I cut the menu off, Dave. There's more than green chicken? Well, because I know you're thinking to yourself, sliced brisket, pulled chicken, pulled brisket, sliced chicken, green beans, green chicken, bacon, and cornbread was more than enough. But did you know this? Did you know that Maggie's smoked mac and cheese and much more is also available? <sighs> Dude, smoked mac and cheese, smoked anything. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Honestly, if one of these dogs dies in the line of duty, smoke the dog. Smoke him up. Yeah. Fucking let's chew that boy, bad boy up. <laughs> shave shave him up, though. I don't want a mouthful of furry smoke. Nah, you got to get the hair. Smoky furry? <laughs> smoky furry. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, that was the worst sexual experience of my life. <laughs> you got a smoky furry. I'm at a hotel. I'm, I'm working on the road, right? There's a furry, <laughs> a furry convention in the hotel. <laughs> And a girl walks by in like a like one of those Chip and Dale costumes. Yeah. I hope it was a girl. I don't know. It just had an opening in the back. Oh. But but I'll tell you what. I was tagging it from the back, and smoke was coming out of the head. <laughs> and I'm like, are you puffing on a button there? <laughs> it's a smoky furry. Nobody likes a smoky furry. I'll tell you what. Uh, but I'll tell you what. And, and that was one crowded elevator. All right. So uh, now wait a second. You would think that it would be enough with the uh, the the Mission Barbecue, Hagerstown, the beer, flying dog, pulled green chicken, and all that other bullshit, right? Yeah. Well, I can tell you this. The event itself is going to blow you absolutely away. Are there, is there entertainment? Well, first of all, you're questioning whether it's going to blow you absolutely away. Yeah. They've used four exclamation points. Then it probably is going so to blow it, I mean, away. it is going yeah. to blow you absolutely away. That's true. Uh, there's a live auction, Dave. Okay. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking to yourself. Well, that's probably just a lot of bullshit. No. Incredible one-of-a-kind items from the Baltimore Ravens. Really? The Pittsburgh Steelers. The Washington Redskins, along with vacation packages, jewelry, celebrity autographed items, and more. There's a monster silent auction. You can get a monster? Yeah. <laughs> if you've been enough, you got to get there early. I want Frankenstein. Dude, how much, for, how much for the Dracula? Oh, uh, silent. Shh, shh, how much for the Black Hall granny shavers? <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, oh my God. You, you, again, buffets, auctions, monsters. Yeah. Oh, you think it's more than enough. Oh my God, the raffles. And it literally says it here. Is then, that a band? It says, then the raffles. Oh, oh my God, the raffles. <laughs> the raffles are awesome. <laughs> you better bring a truck because we're giving away more prizes than you can imagine. Now, I'm going to put that to the test right now. <laughs> I'm going to sit here. I can imagine prizes till the fucking cows come home. <laughs> the green chicken alone is a prize. No kidding. 100% of the proceeds, folks. 100%. Nobody's taking any money off the top. No. Paul Pepper at Mad Hatter on Instagram. He's not stealing any cash. No, I don't see a taste of this. I did this out of the kindness of my own fucking heart. Yeah, you think Tina from Protection for Paws is going to abscond into the distance with this cash? No, she's not. And how do I know? Because this paragraph right here tells me. 100% of the proceeds go directly to Protection for Paws, who proudly donates heat systems, Narcan kits, ballistic vests, four and two canines across North America. That's deep. Don't miss your chance to attend this rock star event. 
September 30th, contact Dave Rose or Tina Richardson on the flyer to get your tickets ASAP. It's going to sell out. I can tell you right now, I don't have a flyer. I don't, uh, yeah. I think it's because he's talking about the event because my wife, remember he just wants us to give the money, yeah. but I still wanted to read the thing about the event in case you're in the Hagerstown, Maryland area. Yeah. So uh, you'll contact Dave or Tina and find out about that. Or you can contact Paul on, on Facebook or Instagram. I guess he'd have information. But mainly what he wanted me to do yeah. Because I have a worldwide audience, Max. Sure you do. Uh, he wants people to give $20 to get a Protection for Paws sticker mm-hmm. or $50 for a Protection for Paws t-shirt. Please make sure you put your address, your mailing address, in the PayPal notes along with the fact that the 40-year-old boy sent you. Didn't you say that part already? I did. I'm saying all those things. Oh. Uh, it's available at paypal.me slash protection for paws, and that's the number four paypal.me slash protection the number four pause one more time paypal.me slash protection for pause or protection for pause at gmail.com tina richardson is running this thing paul pepper is helping her out please don't forget that dave rose has stepped in uh all those guys with all of their fucking barbecue and nonsense and uh and And the raffles will be there so i mean oh my god the raffles and here's what you need to do, folks. You need to sit down. You need to look into a mirror and think to yourself, am I okay going to bed tonight if a dog gets stabbed anywhere in this fucking world? Or ODs. <laughs> you are not. You are not happy with that, folks. So you are going to send money to Protection for Paws via paypal.me slash protection for paws, protection for paws at gmail.com, uh, or go to the fucking benefit and get some green chicken. That's going to be fantastic. How do you know if the dog's overdosed? I mean, b- b- besides if it's dead. I mean, like. The, the, the narc was it the narcon right to yeah. revive a dog that's over sniffed something how well, do they know they he, that he overdo- overdosed well that white stuff will run out of their mouth and then you've got to put a hypodermic needle right into their heart to snap them the fuck oh, out of it okay yeah. uh you if a dog ODs, but if it's wearing the vest you can't you... if a dog ods you got to take it to eric stoltz's house immediately <laughs> you just throw it in the car and you call him first then he's gonna go you're not gonna bring some fucked up poo butt to my house and you're gonna go lad no chance she's no dying fucking chance. on me man <laughs> And when you drive into his yard, run over something yeah. that makes a loud noise that wasn't in the yard before. Okay. Uh, but, oh, my God, he's eating fruit brute. So please don't interrupt <laughs> his fruit brute. Who's that? The one with all the shit in her face? <laughs> no, it's Trudy. Why'd you wear a stud in your tongue? That's my wife. That's a flay show. All right. So all right, so there you go. That's that's a lot of verbiage for a fucking but, promo. I, I believe you got the point across. That, I hope that's so. That's all that matters. Yeah, I tried to there. So, again, please do all those things and, uh, and help out and make your money and give your money to these people and go eat some green chicken if you're in Hagerstown on September 30th. Uh, please go to the website, MikeSchmidtComedy.com, and check out all the cool stuff we've got there. Uh, it's going to be changed soon. I'm going to talk to Ryan, and then I'm going to get my art guy on it, drawing some uh, sketches and sending me some stuff that could possibly be used. Uh, we should contact him, Dave. All right, so <laughs> actually, it's Dave. Dave's my art guy, but David is the one who helps me out here on the show. Uh, so go to the website and go to the uh, Joe Business page. And on there, you've got all sorts of stuff. We still have things for sale. We've got uh, download sets and, and uh, live stuff is available for you but please use the amazon link that's kind of what uh we're really pushing and what we really want you to do because again you don't it doesn't cost you a goddamn thing you're buying stuff from amazon anyway so why not go ahead and help the show out we get money they get money you get stuff it works out perfectly we're gonna buy stuff anyway for fuck's sake so why not cut us in on a taste make me your amazon pimp and give me as much as i possibly can uh cut me a slice and make me happy everything will be grand so go to joe business on the mike schmidt comedy.com use our amazon link click through and make it happen uh, please remember that I'm going to be at the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. Marp. October 7th, 8th, and 9th. Marp. I don't know the schedule. I don't know what time my show is. I don't know what day my show is. What I usually like to do is I go all three days, and I'll hang around, and I'll lurk in the hallways, and I'll shake hands, and I'll see you people, and sometimes I'll have Japanese food with you, and sometimes I'll have Italian food with you, and sometimes I'll just sit in the hallway and bitch about the fact that my slot is over, and I don't know what the fuck to do with myself. All of those things will happen. I can guarantee it. Uh, if you're coming to the show, fantastic. Uh, if you're not... Well, call me that weekend, I guess, but I won't be home. Won't be home. Uh, but please remember that the podcast festival is uh, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. I think they're doing it at the Biltmore down in L.A. I don't know. Tickets are available now. Go to lapodfest dot com for any and all information regarding scheduling, ticket purchasing, and uh, I, so a lot of people who contacted me and said there's no streaming this year. I, I need to be clarify. They told me there were no streaming codes for the performers. They may still be streaming it. Uh, but we just might not be involved in on the back end. So go to LAPodfest.com for any and all information regarding that show. And uh, please know that I'll be there. I don't know what day yet, but I will be performing that weekend, October 7th, 8th, or 9th at one of those shows and hanging out and having a good time. Uh, please remember the Patreon page exists right now. And we're going to we'll film something tonight, I think, or we'll do something tonight for the Patreon page. But uh, but that's there, man. And, and thank you to all the people who've donated. And thank you to the people who've donated for a while and then split. 
Uh, oh, Dad, get this. You know who was donating for a while, but then unfortunately uh, uh, our fr- we lost our friend David Watson. We did? Yeah. Did we sing that song for him? Well, yeah, well, but I mean, dude, this guy's helped me out in so many fucking ridiculous you, ways. What do you mean you lost him? Dude, he, he helped me out with the Hilton in Kuwait. He got me the hotel yeah. room in fucking oh, Atlanta. Oh, he was that guy. Remember, cause remember the hotel in Atlanta was under his yeah, name? Yeah, And I was like, they're going to think, oh, remember the time Dave, David Watson took a shit in the lobby? <laughs> um, Wait, you lost him? And then he him? also got me the Waldorf Astoria in New York when Jill and I went out there and had a good time. Uh, no, I mean, I don't mean I lost him. He donated to the show and he, he just left the Patreon page. I don't mean it in a mean way. Oh, I'm just, oh, oh, I'm just left bringing... the Patreon page. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I just always assume. He was a monthly donor yeah. and then he had to change it up. So I'm, I, I, but I'm just, I'm, it, it popped into my head. I'm just saying, David, have awesome. you put, have you, did you put those videos that we shot? You know, it's interesting up, you would mention that, Dave. Because um, Patreon. <sighs> well, here's, I, all right, let's really break into this. I can't get to the Patreon page anymore on my laptop. <laughs> uh, because my laptop is old, I keep trying to get it. Like t- uh, today, I couldn't sign into my email, correct? Yeah. So it's because my Google Chrome is out of date and will no longer update. So it doesn't. You've maxed out your. Yes, I've maxed out all of my updates. And so the, br- the, the browsers don't. Right. They don't yeah. work with certain things. So I actually went almost three months without being to watch GIFs and videos off Twitter. I would have to go to YouTube and watch them there. So I couldn't watch any GIF or anything. And then all of a sudden it just fixed itself. And I was like, okay, good. That's great. But now it takes me almost two and a half minutes to sign into my email. The Patreon page just spins incessantly. I actually wrote support and they're like, well, the first thing you need to do is update your browsers to the current. And I'm like, well, I'm fucked then because I don't have a laptop. You know what I mean? I, I so I need the the laptop to update the Patreon because I have to upload the videos and I have to type a ton of shit. I don't type it on my phone. You can't do this through your desktop? No, my desktop's older than my laptop. Oh. You know, and, and honestly, super slow. Like, I've, I've been trying to figure out because I got a ton of room, I thought, on my, on my desktop. Uh. But it won't... Dude, if I click a song to play on iTunes, it takes like six seconds for it to start. So you, you, you've... Your operating systems both are maxed out. Yes. And, all right. So yes, because I haven't bought. I mean, these computers I bought in two thousand six, two thousand seven. Wow. So I mean, we're looking at ten years. Yeah. And again, it works, but it's just now the technology is yeah, outstrapping Yeah, but the things you're me. trying to do to promote your show, you can't even. Yeah. I, I mean, well, that's just that's just a recent. I mean, the Patreon thing's been going on for three weeks, and I've written their support, and they're like, update this, and I've. I've said I can't. So those awesome videos we shot in my basement are have yet to be seen. By your... my, well, I don't know if they're awesome, but we did shoot them in your Dude, basement. Come on, man! I'm trying well, to help some, you out. Well, some of them were were I enjoyed, and some of them did get posted. If you, uh, but my, this I, shows a month ago I posted uh, like four of them. Um, I can, I'm not on Patreon. I don't okay. donate. Well, you can. You don't have to. You can go look. You're a member. You can I, do it. I can. I am. Yeah, I think I made you a fucking mod. You can go in and check it out. Yeah, I'm a mod. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm not a mod. Quadrophenia, buddy. Oh. Um, all right, so you're a mod. <laughs> I'd like a mod. He's my He's man. Cool. I just contacted him yesterday. I wrote him a note. And I'm like, hey, because uh, uh, because uh, here's a funny thing. I think I talked about it on the air. I might not have. I told the story about me and him watching wrestling. Yeah. Those wrestlers contacted me via Twitter. The guy who owns Chikara Pro Wrestling, Mike Quackenbush, wrote me on <laughs> yeah? Twitter. He li- yeah, that's a that's a big sentence, right? The guy who yeah. owns Chikara Pro Wrestling, Mike Quackenbush. Quackenbush. He contacted me via Twitter. They, they, he started following me on Twitter. He's like, hey, man, thanks for the shout out on the show this week. And I'm like, the guy's a Chikara pro fucking listen to me. That's goddamn awesome. That's awesome. Because I'll tell you what, because I, I, they're like a very DIY wrestling thing. And in my head, I was like, I wonder if I could get in ground floor with these guys and be like a manager or somebody. Just some guy yelling at people. Oh, that'd be great. Right? Wouldn't that be fucking amazing? I want to help make up your name, though. OD it, dog? No, I mean, you got to have a good wrestling. <laughs> so I'm thinking of like, you know, heroin dog? Um, heroin dog. <laughs> Marp. <laughs> Marp the spaghetti lupus ghost. So the that's not bad. So the Patreon is open, ladies and gentlemen. Go to patreon.com slash Mike Four O Y O B or Four O yeah Mike Four O Y O B yeah. and uh, and become a member. That'd be great. And, There's uh, gonna be cool stuff in there. Well, yes. I mean, like I said, I have all my Kuwait stuff. I get and again, it's that thing. I talk myself out of anybody wanting to see it. It's the fucking dumbest thing in the world, and I get that. And every time we're here, we have the same fucking discussion. It's just a, it's just bananas. All right, but I'll fix it. Um, so please go check out the Patreon page because I'll put, I, dude, I got a video of me getting shaved with fishing wire in fucking Kuwait. It was fucking amazing. Well, I, I like, you know, I've got things that you done that we've done that would look, that'd be pretty cool on there. Well, send them to me and then I'll leave them on my laptop and never post them. That's going to be great. Okay. So business as usual. <laughs> so that exists, man. Go to the Patreon page and that would be great. And write me and tell me what you want to see on there and I'll do my best to get the cool things on there. Uh, all right. So, uh, what else have I got to tell these fine people about? Oh, you know what? Do you want to be an Uber driver? God damn, I know you want to be an Uber driver, don't you? Well, go ahead and use my code DJZW1YTTUE. That's DJZW1YTTUE. I know some of you see that in your head when I say it. Was it Dustin who said that? I finally just realized what that was all about. Somebody on the Joker's page is like, does anybody else visualize DJZW1YTTUE when I see the show? And everybody's like, no. I have no idea what that was. I thought it was a hip kid thing. Well, again, you don't listen. 
You stopped listening. Um, but even if I did listen, I wouldn't know what that is. The Uber code. Like I said, all lowercase. D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. Go to Uber.com and become a driver and use that code. And then you and I will get a lot of money when you complete a certain amount of rides. Oh, yeah. If you're in L.A., it's like 600 bucks. So that would be pretty cool if you did that. You want to be a Lyft driver instead? Then use my code, uh, all caps, Mike720057, M-I-K-E720057. Get in your car and run it into the ground for Uber and Lyft at DJZW1YTTUE or Mike720057. Some of those are lowercase. Some of those are all caps. Figure it out. You've been listening to this fucking show for long enough. Now let's get to the gifts, Dave. Okay. As you yawn, what do you mean? What the fuck? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm keeping you up so late. I had belly full of pasta, man. I'm out. Uh, yeah, that was bad. Where'd we go? What was that joint? Fantinas. Fantinas. And I had, uh, by standby, I, I like to get a spaghetti and meatballs if I go to a place for the first time. And then they had a sausage that I, I got on there. And I, uh, I, that was a, I gotta be honest about that sausage while we're on the air here. It was small. I only got, it was only five discs. They chopped it up and it was only five discs. It was a tiny sausage. I'm glad that you have fans that like to go out with you to, di- to dinner and you meet fancy people at sushi joints because going out with you is always a, you never know what you're going to get. It's a Forrest Gump trip. I liked all that food. I'm just telling you that that sausage seemed tiny and they chopped it up. I don't know why you got to chop up my sausage. I want a sausage link. I don't want a sausage fucking, uh, you know, it's it literally, you chop it up. It's like when Bugs Bunny's taking the bath in the kettle and they're chopping up the carrot chips. He goes, oh, soap chips. I don't want sausage soap chips. I want a full goddamn sausage. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's talk about the gifts. Our friend Jerome, whom I mentioned from the uh, getthebutters.com. Guy with the Rubik's Cube. It's- the, yeah, he's got the snake in your right, ass. Right. Uh, so look, here's the thing. I don't check the P.O. box very often. I check it maybe, maybe once a month. So those baby chicks I sent you probably die. There's trouble. All right. But I check it maybe once a month, sometimes a little longer than that, because it gets away from me. Uh, and then then I usually check it when people go, hey, dude, I sent something to your, <laughs> to your P.O. box. There's something there. And then I'm like, all right, I'll go check that out. So our friend Jerome stepped up to the plate, and he sent me, get this, I opened up, and I was excited, because they get a package from getthebutters.com, yeah. and I was even more excited to pull out like, I think it was mint and sage. Two strippers? Beard cream. Oh, beard cream. Now. It, yeah, beard cream. <laughs> right. So let's talk about beard cream for just a second. There is one thing that is a key component that you would need to use beard cream. Would that be the beard? Ah, look at you right on the nose. So right. uh, he sent this to me probably two months ago when I still had said beard. And he was going to try and soften it up and fix my face. And now, yeah. look what's happened. You don't have the beard. No, if I did, you'd hear it rubbing into this uh, this windscreen or whatever. I don't the fuck. think that cream would have helped that beard. Dude, you are so. My beard looked really good. I know you don't. You'd pretend that it didn't, but it looked really right. good. I would let it get a little scraggly sometimes, but once I'd get it trimmed, it looked good. Okay. Okay. You don't. You don't think so, and that's fine. I thought, uh, I thought there's stuff you could have done. Of course, you could have done some stuff. You yeah. take that weird beard and fix, and got her like epic. It could have been epic. Yeah, I but I I knew it was coming off all the time around my birthday, yeah. so I was like, I, I wasn't that. Yeah, you, you knew know. it was. So I'm just saying, it, it was, was a fledgling effort. I wanted to see if I could grow a beard yeah. that actually looked like a beard, and I could, which was which made me happy. Yeah. Uh, and Jerome made me even more happy because yeah. he sent along some beard cream to fix my face, and now it sits on a shelf, lonely, in my uh, cabinet. Oh, uh, Kutrama. There's always your armpits. Uh, I shaved them. I cleaned oh. them up. They're uh, completely, I have no hair anywhere on my body anymore. So more aerodynamic <laughs> when you fight. I got dipped. I got, okay, uh, I went, got dipped for my birthday. I'm a giant baby. Everything's gone. Uh, uh, I am fucking, geez. I am smooth peanut butter from fucking head to toe. I gotta, I gotta All go right. lay down. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. So that exists. I got so some you, beard cream from cool. our friend Jerome. That was great. Hey, let's talk about our friend Megan Sweet. Sweet. Megan is awesome. Now, Megan is the one who sent us the terrifying breast milk lollipops. Uh, which breast w- milk lollipops from Megan Sweet. Exactly. Right. From the song. And now Megan Sweet has sent us a card. Okay. And, uh, and I opened this card and I read it. It was a very nice, uh, heartfelt. And it was a happy birthday card for me, oh, telling cool. me a lot of good things. And at the end of the card, she had put in parentheses, Mike, you know, I'm so proud of you. you know, and then she wrote, you goat this. Now, I know she meant to say you got this. So she sent you a goat? She, no, she sent me like a, it was like a typo on the card. And oh, I was like, oh man, okay. that's, yeah. and I, I looked at it. I was like, nah, man, I, and I, didn't, I said, I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to tell yeah, her about the thing. It's the thought that comes. Yeah. I'm only going to tell everybody on the show okay. anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I was sad. I was like, oh, nobody yeah. likes a typo and that's terrible. And, uh, and then I like closed the card and I went to put it on my desk and on the front of the card, I didn't realize it was a, a goat holding a birthday cake. 
Oh, dude, you blew you blew her joke. So she, yeah. Well, I, I'm, but no, I laughed after I closed okay, the car and I realized you, I yeah. was dumb. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was like, oh, I felt because I felt so bad for him. Yeah. Like, oh, you goat this. Oh, what a shame. And then I close it up. There's a goat hey, just it's a lurking. Goat. Yeah, and I laughed. And then she wrote me because I because she was the one another one who said, did you go to PO Box lately? And yeah. Like, and then I wrote her and I said, hey, I got your card. Thank you. That was very nice. I said, I actually thought you had a typo and I wasn't going to mention it. And then I closed the card and I laughed for like a minute. And then she wrote me back. She's like, I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, oh, no, I thought the goat thing was like a fucking typo. And then I saw the goat on the card and, I, and she's like, oh, my God, I thought I made a huge mistake. And I'm like, no, we're fine. Because nobody knows how to approach me and talk to me. Like nobody at all. Yeah, I don't know. Any idea. I get it. They always think I'm burying them for some reason. Um, you just call me a chicken? Perhaps. All right. So our good friend Murph, Casey, Casey? Murphy, uh, he He's, sent me. He scared me one time because. What? He was off of he was off of Facebook, I guess. I don't know if he reconfigured his account, uh-huh. but I have this thing. I don't know how I set it up. I'm, I I think I set it up right. It lets you know when you've been unfriended, but I think it lags sometimes. And really, and like, yeah. And one time I I logged into the Facebook, and uh, it said uh, you are you and Casey Murphy are no longer friends. Whoa! And I'm like. Man, that's what a sucks. tough way to get it broken to you too. Got a robot who impersonally tells you. And so I went on, and sure enough, he's listed in my friend list. But when I clicked on it, it said this uh, this account is no longer activated, or you may be blocked from it. You the only way to get it off, you can unfriend him, sure. and it'll remove him from your friend list. But I'm like, wait a minute, that's weird. Yeah, that's strange. But uh, it's happened before, and people are just off for whatever reason. Maybe they changed their account or something, and he's back on now. So, But that panic went through me because there's, <laughs> there's only a few people on Facebook I, that tolerate me, and right. he's one of them. So. Well, I'll tell you this. This might have happened because I'll tell you, take it from me. Sometimes if you're on social media and you scroll through and you're looking at something, your thumb can accidentally like something that you weren't supposed to like, or it can accidentally unfriend somebody you weren't supposed to unfriend. Oh. So that'll happen occasionally. So perhaps that's what happened with Murph. I don't know, but uh, I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, he sent us, uh, he sent me a very nice letter, uh, which was very which cool. Uh, Q. Nice. Yeah, I don't have enough of those. Okay. But he, he stepped up and he sent me this note, and then uh, he attached a newspaper from Whiting, Indiana, because he had posted something about the pierogi fest, and then I made a joke that said, well, fuck, I know what I'm doing in 2018 that weekend. I'm going yeah. to pierogi fest. And then he wrote me a note, and he's like, are you serious about going to pierogi fest? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as most people you always would, do. You I, would. I would go to fucking yes. Pierogi Fest. So then he, he used the thing. He bought. He got the newspaper for Pierogi Fest, and then he, he said he had it in his house. He forgot about it, and then he found it. He's like, oh, fuck, i got to send this to Mike. And then he opened it up, and he realizes it's just the fucking, it's the penny saver, but on the front it says Pierogi Fest. He thought it was like an in, <laughs> an intricate look at all of the ingredients and all of the pierogies available. Like a whole pamphlet yeah. on pierogi. He thought it was like a, pl- a pierogi playbook. But instead, it was a pierogi, pierogi pamphlet. <laughs> but it was a pierogi pamphlet. So, uh, so in his mind, he's la- and it, which made me laugh in the letter. He actually said, "He goes, he goes. So rather than throw this away myself, I've decided to uh, send it to you now, and so you can throw it away right now in the mail." In the post office before even leaving. Um, but he's, but then he goes, "But if you were thinking of maybe going to pierogi <laughs> fest, I've included my business card because I always like to go to these places and scout for uh, you know like uh, signage, and he he runs things at a bar and stuff like that." So, uh, so I don't know. Uh, let's find out what Nick, uh, you want to, uh, let's do, you know what? What if we made it a com- combined pierogi slash Schmitty fest? Would you go, dude? I'm going to put you on the spot right fucking now. Would you go to where? Whiting, Indiana. Um, when, when? I don't know. Next year sometime. We got to find out. Is it, if it, I would go if it's before for the 4th of July, cause I have to find a good place to get some fireworks. <laughs> well, well, no, all right. Fuck you. I don't want to be the incidental reason for your trip, and you're really going to get fireworks. Would you go meet fans with me? Meet to your fucking fan, fest? Meet your fans. Yeah, and- I'm going to tell. Well, literally, I will put this word out. If fans want to meet me, we'll go. We'll literally go to Pierogi Fest in Whiting, Indiana, and you and I will fucking show up. All right. You in? I think so. Your hands are all sweaty. Look at you. <laughs> you don't <laughs> you even want to leave your house. <laughs> I, I got stuff. I know, you, but yeah, I, I will not leave you by your side. No, you and, and there. please, there's nothing. I, I'm, yeah, I get it. It's not like I'm afraid of fans or people <laughs> that like you. You're afraid of people, period. I just, I'm not a big crowd dude. It's the pierogi fest. How big is that fucking crowd I'm not a big be? fan of pierogies. <laughs> what about fests? You like fests? I don't like parents. You're out on all of this. Uh, I, don't, I don't like Indiana. <laughs> I, don't I don't like, like fests. I don't like whiting. I don't like whites. I don't, I don't like ing. I don't like you. You don't like Murph. <laughs> I like Murph. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if it, it's yeah, we'll give it a shot. I, I, that's the best commitment I'm going to get out of him. <laughs> so I'm throwing that out to you guys right now. Well, Seriously. I actually almost entertained the idea of going to California for the Pod, podcast. We've talked about that, and then you kind of dropped it. Well, we talked about it recently. I, I kind of had to because of the boys' football schedule. I don't you know, Right. So that kind of throws a wrench into a lot of stuff. All right. Weekends, but 
Okay. Yeah, well, I will eventually go to something if, if it's... Well, I've I'll, been to your show. I went to one of your shows. We went, went to two of your shows. Yes, you did. Two in Chicago. And then you went out for pizza afterwards. I went to one, the one in Chicago, and I went to one in Aurora yes. when we went to pizza. Yeah. So, all right. So, I, well, I'll tell you what. I will schedule a Midwest show so you don't have to travel too far, right. and you're coming to that. But more... Maybe, you know, maybe I just do Indianapolis that week of fucking Pierogi Fest. And then we also go to Pierogi Fest for Waiting Indiana. We got a Schmidt week. Indiana Schmidt week? Like Speed Week? <laughs> Indiana Schmidt week. Indiana Schmidt week. God damn it. Uh, I'm, I, I literally, I'm saying it right now. I'm in. If you will, and I hope and I want you to do it because it'd be right. fucking great. Well, it, it actually depends on when it is. Okay. Well, I don't even know about the the fucking. Uh, you know the. I is it a cold weather thing? Pierogies or is that no? Because he just he just went. So he just it had to so be in May. Recently. I think May. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It'll be May, next June, May probably. May June July Fourth. Yeah, fireworks. I can do that. <laughs> I do not play fucking second fiddle to a bottle rocket. <laughs> you do in this house. Fuck that. All right, so. I am not one of your fans. I am calling this right now Whiting, Indiana, Pierogi Fest next year. <laughs> we're going, and I'm going to try to schedule a show as well. But we're doing this, and he's coming. I'm fucking making Dave come. He's going to be there. Fuck, why don't we just get you a booth at the goddamn a, Pierogi Fest, and you could draw people? A dunk? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> those are I get a lot of those job requests. All of my fans, guys. all of my fans look good holding tennis rackets. Don't you, you want, want a do stupid that? caricature <laughs> before you get on the roller coaster? All of my fans look so good in roller skates. <laughs> Please. All right, so, uh, th- so that's happening. Fuck it, I'm calling it right now. We're going to be in Whiting, Indiana for the Pierogi Fest. Will there be a show? I don't know. Maybe we'll do the hotel room show. Who knows? But Dave will be there. I'll be there next year Pierogi Fest. We're going in Whiting. Murph, see what you fucking did. Uh, all with your goofy ass pierogi pamphlet you mailed me. So all right. So that's uh, so that was Murph and Megan and Jerome's beard cream. Now I also got this. Uh, I got. I think I've mentioned it on the air, but now it's official. I've been officially invited to a wedding of listeners. This will be my second listener wedding. Wow, Dave, that's nice. Uh, exactly. The first one was, of course, uh, Mara and Derek, the Leitners. Didn't you go to one before the Leitners? A wedding? I don't know if I did. Off the top of my head, I mean. I oh, there was one where somebody wanted to use one of our songs for for that right. was the 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 what was it <laughs> the Lavoise. yeah the, yeah um so yeah so that which right, so we were there in spirit but we weren't I just physically associate there. the word wedding with the name that's right all. but I was invited and uh, I was invited to Derek and Mara's and I, we went to Las Vegas and right, uh, Jill and I actually went to their wedding we had a great time it was really fun it was amazing and uh, Derek Leitner has been a fantastic guy he's seen me like eight times uh, and Mara has seen me once or maybe twice. But it doesn't matter. We were invited to their wedding, and thank you for that. I was so happy. So now, yeah. October 14th, yeah. I'm going to another wedding. Our friends, Jolene. Jolene, Jolene. Jolene, Jolene. Don't take my man just because you can. Unless it's Dr. Mike. Unless oh, that man right. is Dr. Mike. They were in the song, too. Jolene has stolen. Yes, they were. So yeah. Jolene has stolen away Dr. Mike's heart. And they are going to tie the knot on October 14th. Jolene is a, uh, a certified uh, acupuncturist. She's got a power puff. She's the one with the power puff girl. Think so. Yeah. 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 yeah I know that. Uh, I met Jolene at. Um, Jolene. She was at Podfest a couple of years ago. And I actually lifted her up in a photo. And uh, that and, doesn't sound like you. And the repercussions of that are still echoing throughout the land. So uh, that was fun. Um, Why she didn't want you to pick her up? No, I'm teasing. I just I, oh. I lifted her up in the photo, and then uh, uh, fan, Somebody, some people wrote me and like, "Why? What are you? Uh, wow! What are you?" Because again, people see a photo and they lose their mind. Um, so that's uh, that's available now. So if I meet a fan, I shouldn't p- pick them up. Always pick women up. Really? Always. Bottom line. Always. I, I, Isn't and that I, unwanted physical contact? Though? If they hug you, pick it up. They close it with a pickup. Always close it with a lift. If so, mm. don't just walk up and put your arms out and hug a woman, but if a woman comes up to you and hugs you, lift her in the air. Yeah, yeah. Close with the lift over the back. Well, if you want to fucking have the time of your life, go ahead and spin around. I, mean, I, I can do the Swayze thing. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. If you want to put that much into it, go ahead. That's but I, you, the girl has to get a really big running start. Uh, well, and that's not going to be a problem because you only hug people from afar. No, you know me. Actually, you hug people from Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you're from Jafar, I'll hug the shit. Oh out my of you. god, you're gonna get so fucking squeezed. Uh, so Jolene and Dr. Mike are getting married, Where? and uh, and it's funny. I I found indirectly. I think I w- I they met via me because they you know Jolene listened to the show, and then Dr. Mike was uh, she was uh, our friend uh, Sandra D. Sanchez. Yes, Dr. Mike was on her podcast, and then uh, there was a way they met. I don't know the full story. Once we get closer to October, I'll have it for you. But I know that I. I'm going to their wedding on October 14th. Consider this my RSVP, I, 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 but I cannot select an entree until I, I get gonna home. I was going to say, do you want the chicken or the vegetable? Yeah. Oh, oh, vegetable. Ooh, that sounds good. 
Uh, and I don't know if I have a plus one yet. Who knows what's happening? It's October 14th. Where? It's so far in the future. It's in Long Beach. So it's by me. So I'm not, that's another good thing is I don't have to fucking fly anywhere. Is that where Dr. Dre's from? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, no, no, that's where Snoop's from. Oh, Snoop's Dr. from. Dr. Dre's from Compton. Compton. And you know you're in trouble when you get those two together. Yeah. Um, so certainly uh, I'm going to a wedding. I get, so I get the official invite is my point. So I'm, I'm saying now, yes, but I'll also send you back the thing. Because again, like I said, A, I don't know if I have a plus one. Yeah. And B, I don't, I don't have an entree How do you know you were, you were given the choice of a plus I one? I opened it. I, oh, I scrolled I through it. Yeah, it said, it, you know, Mr. Mike Schmidt. And I yes. think it'd be better if you got to sit with like the single grandma. Oh, I would you fuck know. the shit out of a single grandma. Or, or the bridesmaid's date. You know that table. I don't want to sit, no, fuck that. You guy. know what I, I mean? There's always at a wedding. Yeah. There's always that table of the stragglers. No, I'll will sit with like an old auntie and just and then just like Aunt, fucking ta- auntie, auntie, yeah. and I'll, I'll charm her pants. You're in off. Long Beach. Yeah, I'll tag some. I'll tag some aunt. Yeah, aunt. you t- try to do that, Dennis's wedding. I'm sorry. The copper top. Copper was it copper top? <laughs> yeah. She was like 60 years old, dude. <laughs> She, I didn't do anything. I was we were, I just kept calling her copper top and stuff, and she she took a shine to that. Um, all right. So anyway, folks, Jolene and Doctor Mike are getting married. They sent me a wedding invitation. I'm going there October 14th. Thank you, Jolene and Doctor Mike. I will be there. Now let's talk about this gift that I received from a gentleman by the name of Paul Pepper. Now you might know Paul. Where do from, I know that? Well, from his extensive work with Protection for Paws. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a charity of some sort. I've heard a lot about it. Uh, specializing in green chicken and heroin dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so you should give as much money as you can. But Paul Pepper, get this, man. Paul's like, hey, I just sent you something uh, uh, to your P.O. box. And then he's like, it's got a tracking number. And I'm like, oh, that means I got to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I really got to go now. So everybody else I just thanked, thank Paul Pepper because he made me fucking go because he put a tracking number on some shit. Uh, and then he sent it and then I still didn't go. And then he, uh, I wrote him about the charity thing. We were going back and forth and he goes, Hey, by the way, uh, you wouldn't have to know anybody who has a PO box that hasn't checked it at all, but, you know, by any, and I'm just like, Oh fuck. Yeah, that's right. Cause he sent me the tracking number. He sent me all of this. And then I finally he, he went helped you out. and I grabbed everything. And there's a box that was really heavy. It was from Amazon. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I get home, I open this thing up. Uh, Paul Pepper bought me an Amazon echo. Wow. Not like the dot, but the fucking tower. What's that? It's it's what you have. You because you have the dot. You have the Echo Dot. I have a Le- Alexa. I don't know what it is. Alexa's the, Val, who, Alexa Val's. lives inside the Echo. You have that thing that the, the circle thing. Yeah, yeah. That's an Echo. That's an okay. Echo Dot. Yeah, Val's got one. Yeah. So Alexa lives inside it. All right. So I have. She's t- very polite. Uh, she seems very nice. I well, the thing is, I guess you got, got a bigger. So you got a big. I one. got the tower. Yeah. So yeah. the big. Who's one. in that one? Uh, Alexa lives in there as well, but I think she's got friends. But I went and did a show called the Murder She Wrote podcast with our friend Ben and Marissa. Friends, Ben and Marissa, and uh, during the show, he out of nowhere, like we're talking, and then Ben just goes, "Alexa, look up that in, in the middle of a fucking podcast." Yeah, and Alexa looked it up, and I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" And I, I, I acted as if I was a caveman <laughs> seeing fire for the first time. <laughs> yeah. So I, and so then I just kept shouting things at Alexa. Oh, like, but, I, what do you think Bob I did? Jovi and yeah. all that nonsense. I asked, uh, I asked Alexa to check my prostate. <laughs> How'd that go? Well. I'm not going to tell you because it's personal. You know who I had checked my prostate? Who? Jerome, a sneaky snake. <laughs> Slid it right he up. He tried there. to, but there was a Rubik's cube up there. <laughs> Blockage. Hold on. Oh man, there's, there's something up there. It's yellow. And there's a lot of squares on it. Oh, it looks green too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got more work to do in there. Let me twist it. Uh, so Paul fucking sends me an echo, dude. That's awesome. And I don't even again. I don't know. I don't fuck all about it. I when I get home because again, I, I I got these things the day before I split. And uh, I opened it up and I looked at it. I, and it's so funny. It's got such a badass box. Like, I don't even yeah. want to split the seal on it. It, it just looks, looks cool. so beautiful. It's cool looking. And I, I don't know what it will do. I guess it will play music and I plug it into whatever well, and I, I it know. turns my lights off. I don't I don't know. I don't know either. But all I know is I don't know. Well, I don't know where it gets its music. Where is it? its music source? From your iTunes. Like, you, it no, Bluetooth. No, 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 no. Oh, no. It plays from Amazon Prime Music. Okay. Okay. Because I yelled. I, as, what would be the first thing you would yell? Play, play what? Like band, like Alexa play. Well, I would ever play Van Halen. You probably right. had her play. Yeah. yeah. No, I first thing I said, Val says, if you tell her to say, say Alexa and then say play a, a, a band or something, yeah. and it'll do it. So I went up to the thing and I go, Alexa, play Tom Jones. Yeah. And it started playing a Tom Jones song I haven't heard in forever. Gorgeous. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I'm like, wh- where's this? Because I don't have. It, I, I thought, okay, maybe. Is it- Not only does a chick have a hot voice, she likes Tom Jones. Yeah. And, and album cuts. 
Yeah, it was a it was a live version of Twist and Shout. See, that's gorgeous. And, I'm and like, come on. So that's the thing is it plays all the stuff off the Amazon Prime music. Okay, but I, so I, yeah. I don't know if it also does your like I said, I haven't learned. I didn't open a fucking thing. That's I, all I've done with it. Yeah, I went to well exactly. So yeah. that's what I in my head I was like, well, what can this do? Is it because it, it, it says it turns on your you can hook your whole house into it, like lights and all sorts of shit. So, but the thing is, it's always on, so it's listening for you. Yeah. So I'm, now I'm worried about, you know, like, like I want to tell Alexa to talk dirty to me while I'm jerking <laughs> off. You know what I mean? I asked her what size bra she wore. Oh, okay. And what'd you she, say? I do not understand your question, which See? means she wasn't wearing one. You know, yeah, absolutely. But also that means she's like one of those space bitches in fucking Star Trek. <laughs> like when you go up to the A fucking... Space- up to some planet and you're just like ah green girl i would like to know what kind of bra you are wearing and she's like i do not understand your earthly lingo and the next thing you know shatner's shatner's face down in a broccoli pussy he's just like going to work (laughs) that's how it works man now i know why you got kicked out of houses oh stop your nonsense space bitch uh look i meant it in a nice way i didn't mean it in a mean way (laughs) that's not a word i use often (laughs) i'm gonna start now actually i saw them at lollapalooza too by the way Ladies and gentlemen, space bitch. Please, well, space bitches. No, fuck that. Don't don't no, sell no, them no. short. Oh, no. just space bitch. Space bitch is funnier than space bitches because that's derogatory. <laughs> yeah, space bitches sounds like a rap group that yeah. they name themselves, but space bitch is just space like, bitch yeah. is a thing. That looks good on a drum. Oh, don't kid you, <laughs> Marp. <laughs> Uh, so thank you, Paul, for my echo, and thank you, everybody else, for all of these gifts, and thank you, Dave, for letting me be in your basement, and thank you all for listening to this uh, show. And now, uh, if you remember, Dave says we've got to record four or five more podcasts, so I don't understand well, that, I, quite I, frankly. I, I, but I, Maybe maybe we should hold off. You think? Well, I don't know if this sucked or not. If this sucked, we don't want to do more. That's the thing, is i got to wait for feedback from people, because they fucking hate this. There's no point in doing anything else yeah, with you. Right. Uh, but now we got to do anchor clips. we got all sorts well, of stuff. Well, we know Patreon you do stuff. good alone. I'll, just, I'll bow out of the next one. At least you'll have a podcast to bank in you need you, you need to lay low right. until whiting indiana next year buddy get ready save your nerve for the pierogi fest well, i got a lot of meds i can hold on to till then <laughs> all right well that's good yeah, dude see. and pierogies are soft you could like get like a plate of pierogies and just stick a pill the into Lexapro the dough right of each yeah that's gorgeous man all right it'll choke Lexapro that down pierogies lexa pierogi lexa pierogi dude what flavor is this lexa lexa what lexa, <laughs> lexa pierogi what, what flavor is this? Calm? <laughs> what flavor is this, Brody? Relax. All right, I like that. That's fantastic. I'll knock that down. <laughs> inside yourself it's easier to hide when you pretend yours are nice women love a guy with a giant neck See you.